Now then. Now then. Seems like we're live. Now then. Seems like we're live. Fantastic. Okay, let's continue. And when we last left off, our construction spiders were way too full, for one thing. Um, should probably do something about that. Uh, but also, we were about to design the barrel uh, production area. Let's do this first if we can. Um, I think for the moment, just to keep it simple, I'll just remove all the requests for the military things. Shove those into the trash slots. Now, which one did I just change? This one. And that should just about do it. Same one for this, but make sure the leader is still distinguishable from the rest. Hey, Yasha Slave. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Now then, with that out of the way, all of our spiders no longer having bots floating behind them. Let's see if we can figure out a layout that makes sense for this stuff. Uh, obviously, we're going to use prods wherever we can. And... Beacons... Where did the beacons fit for these? I think it was down here. Uh, in those other designs. I see. Fair enough. Alright. So... So there's no beacon here? Uh, where is it? Yeah, no, there's nothing at this part. Okay, then. Well, anyway, first thing we should check is the ratio between these machines. Um, that is a net rate of 4.3... Oh, there's no beacon here. 2.75 per second. This consumes how much? 2 per second. And this makes 4.75. So, I think I would like to try to have... I can't flip that over. Two of these per machine. That's... Oh, right. I was going to say that's still a net rate of two, but this one's not under the beacon. Might make it a little bit difficult to figure out a layout for this one. Maybe... Maybe we could do it like this? That's looking pretty good so far, actually. We could have pipe under here. Inserters go here. And... Net rate of 0.75 crushed barrel per second, not bad. Best ratio that we're going to get with direct insertion, I think. So we input sulfuric acid and crushed barrel, output water, random sand, and beryllium sulfate. Um, we need beryllium sulfate... Wait, no. Beryllium sulfate... Yeah, beryllium sulfate plus cryonite rod becomes... Uh, beryllium hydroxide. So... We need some cryonite rods coming into here. 
Um, I'm guessing, yeah, we're going to need way more water than what's going to come out of this. Not as much as I thought, actually. But, yeah, we'll still need an external source of water. I wonder if... I might end up moving this closer to uh, the ocean. Just so we've got a good throughput of water without a million fluid trains. We'll see where we end up in the end. Can we prod this? We can. So, what's our ratio going to look like there? Um, what are we consuming here? Just beryllium sulfate. Negative 2.093. That's suboptimal. Uh, so both of these are making 2.48 per second. Just one of these uses 3.3. Good morning. I was just about to start playing myself. Now I have your stream to go along with. Nice. Cool band name. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Now, at this rate, I'm not seeing how we can have a very good ratio for beryllium sulfate if we're going to have like a repeating pattern of not very machines, not very many machines for each chain here. We're also going to have to get the cryonite uh, to come in somewhere here. Probably like this. How many cryonite is this going to use? Less than one per second. Oh, and how much uh, crushed two per second per machine? Could definitely get away with the yellow for that one. Now then, question is... Maybe we could do one, one to two here. We only need 3.3, 1.24 per second from each of these machines. Uh, if we do that, it's going to make it awkward connecting this pipe. Maybe a long arm? Be in order? How's this ratio? We're still negative... We're only getting 2.48 per second, and we need 3.3 .3 per second. Um, really not liking where this is going as far as the layout goes. If we don't mind bottlenecking on that by that much, What's the next step? So far, we have to get rid of sand, which that comes out through the middle here, the same outputs as the ingots, uh, which is here. It's all not looking great so far. Um, Alright, let's just figure out the whole chain first, and then we'll see what it looks like. And we can move things around and try and make it neater and do a better ratio. 
So this is going to be nothing but beryllium sulfate. It doesn't have any side effects, at least. Hopefully this machine will massively overproduce what we need for the next step, and then we just don't have to worry about this ratio kind of sucking. Um, so... Beryllium hydroxide becomes beryllium powder and water. And the only... Uh, the only... Side effect we have to deal with is water, which is... Not going to be a big deal. Maybe just do it like this. Can we prod this? Why do I have no productivity modules? I'm going to bring the construction supply train. Oh, it needs to turn around. Could you please do this? And then do this. And then... Um, over here. Wait for five seconds of inactivity, and then when you come over here, wait for passenger present. That should get it resupplied and automatically to come back here. Helen Grandmaster, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. All right. Uh. How's this ratio? Net rate of beryllium hydroxide is indeed more than we need. We could actually support four of these machines under one of these. And that's, but that's if these could keep up with this one, which it can't. So, let's see. Requires 3.3 .3 per second we're missing 0.85. So it's going to go at a... Uh, it's going to be missing between a quarter and a third of its speed. Well, a third would be one point something. Let's see. 3.333 three. Divided by 0.853. Okay. Um, so let's say we're missing a quarter. This is going to go at 75% speed. We're going to get um, more than 12 beryllium hydroxide per second out of this. Which means we can support three of these uh, directly. I hope we can pull off a decent layout in this limited space, but I think we could probably find a way to move all of this down a bit. Um, but for now, let's just see what we can come up with. So this has nothing but fluid input, a little bit of water output, and one physical output. Um, why is this bit turned around the wrong way? Oh, I think it's supposed to be, and there's splitters there. Hey, Niren Wolf, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So, uh, this machine not properly supported by these two, we'll be able to support three of these. We're going to want some kind of arrangement with pipe reaching all of those. And then water goes back up that way. And then All three of these need a physical output of beryllium powder, and this takes nothing but beryllium powder. Okay, so following the pattern, if we're going to do this similar to the last time, we're going to have something like this, where the beryllium powder 
goes to the inputs for the furnaces. It doesn't actually need any... Oh. Uh, we kind of got sent some vulcanite blocks before I turned off this combinator. Uh, let's change it around, shall we? Although it is a good sign that we do have the vulcanite blocks. Let's make this uh, passive... I mean... Provider... Fresh... Provide stack threshold, 160. Get rid of this signal. And now LTN knows what's in these chests. And I'm just going to turn these around. And we'll turn this into a balanced loader as opposed to unloader. Uh, everything less than or equal to zero. Turn this belt around. And same goes for all of this. I need to turn around all of the belts that have vulcanite blocks on them. Undergrounds too. Wait, what? I thought I... Oh, I see. That's not what I was looking for. Oh, no. Uh, let's put a filter on this one. Well, I guess it's a bit late for that. Vulcanite blocks. Get in my inventory. There we go. And then... In here, please. It should be... What are the bots doing? Oh, I see. It should be exactly 16,000 as soon as we turn all of these belts around properly. Oops. Except, of course, we've got blocks going back to the stone again. Also pick those up. And those. Is that everything? Should have picked these up as well. Alright, if that's not exactly all of them, then it's probably close enough. Let's just set this threshold as low as possible. Although, come to think of it, um, they won't have a destination if there's any blocks missing. Oh, there it is. Alright, cool. Back into the rail, no rail network with you. Um, once that's done, I think I'll move all of this down a bit. Probably. 
might be a bit difficult to fit what we need in here. Um, there's no physical output from this one. This outputs sand as a byproduct. Uh, these are going to have implicit filters because they're direct inserting, but we do need to have filter inserters to output the sand, like so. And then... Uh, I guess the input is going to be on the other side. This might get rather awkward trying to lay out the beacons. Not to mention get the output from these. I think we're definitely going to move all of these smelters down a bit. Oh, and these are supposed to be putting the Vulcanite blocks back into the train. There we go. Once this is loaded, we're going to get rid of these stations and move the whole thing down a bit. But yeah, one of these to two of these to one of these seems okay. We'll have a net negative rate of beryllium sulfate at full, full capacity for this thing, but this will overproduce for um, three of these making beryllium powder. Assuming those are all under a beacon, that is. Um... So that'll give us 7.4 beryllium powder per second, which will almost support six of these. If it's mirrored on the other side, it'll, it'll very easily support six of these. All right, train's gone. Let's get rid of this for now. In fact, get rid of all of it. If we are going to do something like that again, it's going to be further down. We'll keep some of what we've got here. Oh, and there's that one Vulcanite block that was missing. Rip. Okay. All of this down here for now. And now we've got plenty of room to figure out a layout for this. We also have this space over here that is probably just not going to get used. Um, I think the rate that we came up with. We could probably fit one more of these, maybe? We won't necessarily end up using the same gap between these. Okay, so what if... Beacon here. And then... That's actually touched by two of these. That's better. And speed goes here. If we're going to direct insert, one to two is the best we can do with these. Um, where's the sand going to go? 
now that we've got more room, we can definitely do a better layout with these ones, I think. I th think I would like to have... This has only got one fluid input, right? So water would go here. And here. Why are the bots doing this again? That's disconcerting. We'll obviously need to output the beryllium powder. Uh, what's the rate for each machine here? The Creakly. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, we can do... I don't think we can do four of these if we rearrange this a little bit. But we'll try this for now. If this beacon's going to be all the way down here, it's not going to be touching this one. So maybe we should move these back over. And then... Depending on how we do things... There's only one physical input for this. And the rest goes here. That should be all that takes. Water output goes like this. Why are the bots hovering like this? This is driving me crazy. Is it because there's no room in this one? I got rid of all the military stuff. Why are they carrying copper plate? Okay, they're not supposed to carry copper plate. Let's send the construction spiders back for resupply. And then... It would be better if this lined up with that, but we can't do that with this beacon. Maybe we could put the beacons... No, we couldn't. I don't... Oh, this is only going to have one output. But how fast were these individually? 2.48 per second. Can a long arm inserter keep up with that with a stack size of 2? Uh, let's drop one and see what rate calculator has to say. Units. Uh, I think that means we need slightly more than one long arm to keep up. So I guess if this part's going to be symmetrical, we're just ha going to have to do this. And then let's blueprint this, remove the stuff that can't be flipped, turn that around, start copy pasting these. The water, that's actually not connected. Water needs to be connected like so. And then we'll have our... This is a bit different. We actually had two different output belts for these ones previously, because this was just a line down the middle of where the pulverizers go. So I think we'll only need one 
I was going to say we only need one splitter like this, but... Let's make sure we're not going to saturate the belt or anything. I don't think we will. Uh, three beryllium powder per second and barely any sand. I don't know how I'm going to get the sand from here to here. I guess we could... Hmm... That could go there, and then I guess we just do this. And then same thing on the other side. Doesn't look quite right. Do these need to be long arms now? I think we've got an unnecessary tile here. Let's move all of this up a little bit. And those can be yellows. And then... Oh, what are our spiders doing now? None of them have bots hovering around anymore. Good. Bring them back. And then... We also got our train here already. Let's grab some pipe and stuff. Didn't actually get them to... I didn't actually get the train to carry pipe. I will take the prods and beacons and belt and assembly machines and chemical plants and so on. Okay. Why is this part not centered? Don't tell me there's no way to fit this bit. Um, I don't think there is a way. That's a problem. We kind of need these to be, I think, about here. If we're going to get the benefit of that beacon there. And then... If this part was symmetrical... That beacon wouldn't support all of these. We'd want it in here somewhere, but that could make the outputs a problem. Um, also, this part's not right anymore. Hello, construction spiders. Can we perhaps... Push this in here. I don't know how we're going to get the sand out of this one, though. If we do that. I think there's no way. We could maybe... Pipe goes here. Inputs go here. Move that over one and then not get the beacon benefit. Hmm. We could do something different with the water pipes here. And then... Sand. 
comes out this way. Goes down there. That goes there. I like where this is going. Could we maybe flip? Oh. Uh, where is the direct insert going to happen? If how are we going to get rid of this water? If we point these here, how do we get the sulfuric acid in? If we move these down a tile again, we could have more room for pipe and do the long arm inserters here. I think I like that better. Uh, I don't know how we're going to deal with this beacon. at all, actually. I'm thinking of having the water on this side. And then... Beacon in the middle. Underground pipe goes... that doesn't work. Hmm. Oh, here we go. Underground pipe goes here. And then I have no idea how the... Uh, beryllium powder output is going to happen. We obviously can't do it in the middle. It might be a lot easier to do it on the sides and merge them together. We can obviously get the sand out this way. Um, it's just these two. Can't put another underground there because we need two tiles to make it go in and out. So... Like this. Kind of cool, actually. You know, as long as we already have that belt up there, instead of bringing this all the way down here, since it's all going to be together and then split anyway, uh, we could do it like that. Yeah, I kind of like that. I already don't mind the position of these substations either. Cool. I think this might just about be it. So we've got not enough beryllium sulfate, except we've got way more um, we've got significantly more beryllium hydroxide than we need if that was going full speed to support three of these. It would normally support four, but these can't keep up. So that's going to give us 14 beryllium powder per second, which we only need 9.6 to support this. How many machines? How many industrial furnaces can we support with 14? Oh, 14.4. We can do 9 industrial furnaces. Didn't we get exactly 14.4? No, we got 14.8. Okay. So I think... I think instead of having these go down to their own little sets of furnaces, 
We'll do a bit of a split, a uh, merge and split instead. Okay. And then that goes there. Uh, water. We can obviously connect that on each side. Except I forgot to have the water connect to here. I don't usually like to do this, but everything coming in here will be on this side of the belt, so that will connect just fine. So we can just do a regular pipe like this. And then we need the water on both sides to connect, which is not going to be difficult. It's just a question of, oh, that's actually super easy. Not the worst aesthetics there. Cool. I'm actually starting to like this layout. There is no water output in those two middle machines. Two middle... Uh, that's true. Uh, that is unfortunately true. What can we do? We can't get sulfuric acid in there. If we move this one tile, it doesn't get the beacon. Um, if I do like an underground here, we can't fit the inserters. I think we will have to move all of this down a tile. And use the long arm inserters to direct insert to this. Luckily they can keep up pretty easily. Let's just double check that. Um, 1.24 beryllium sulfate per second, good. And then we can very easily get our water done like so. Obviously not going to need these tiles here. And this is going to go up here instead. So sulfuric acid in, water out, sand out, uh, beryllium sulfate goes here. Seems good. And then we don't actually need this awkward bit. It's not the worst looking bit of pipe, but this is obviously much cleaner up here. And this part needs to be long arms. Now, can this go a bit longer? No. And just to double check, all of the physical outputs from this, 14 per second plus uh, 2.48 sand per second is going to easily fit on a single blue belt. Then we split off to get our desired product. Um, I want the sand to go down here actually. Let's move this over. Actually I did say I wanted to do a merge and split, didn't I? So. This can all 
go... I don't know, this layout is pretty good too. We're not going to have much trouble. What outputs do we need? It's only sand and... Beryllium ingots, right? What do we use beryllium ingots for? Uh, right click. Beryllium plate. And... That's literally it, directly. Beryllium plate becomes aeroframe pole. And... A whole bunch of other stuff, but... As far as the intermediate products go, that's basically it. I think. Aeroframe scaffold. And aeroframe bulkhead. Well, it doesn't make aeroframe scaffold. Uh, yes it does. Plate and pole. And we can do that on the ground, presumably, with productivity modules. If we can support it in this block, I would like to do all of that here. But if we can't, that's no big uh, problem. Okay, so tentatively, let's see. This is our layout. Um, if we're doing it like this... We could definitely bring these closer, and we could probably have... We could definitely fit another set over here, even if we didn't bring them closer. So, let's try that. Uh, we are going to need... I almost forgot the cryonite rods for input uh, for these, but that should be easy. We need 0 0.67 cryonite rods per second, so we could just do it like this. And I think that is all the more reason to bring these sets of pulverizers together. How much, uh, what is it, barrel? How much barrel is this going to consume at max rate already? 57 per second. Uh, that's actually almost ideal. I think we can fit one or two more blocks like this, so... I want to move this as far to the side as possible. And then... Bring this back here. This comes back here. Let's keep moving these over. And... So on. rid of that for now. And we can actually only fit one more. Or at least only one more pair. Now if we go with this design, can we fit these? Uh, where we want to. Yeah, just barely. It's actually a really good fit. Can't see for the construction spiders. And I don't want to do another half of those for that, so... Uh, let's change this for now, and I want to put this in the middle as much as I can. I'll figure out that pipe later. Uh, 
That's our middle right there. And then we'll double check that right again. They're all prodded and speed munchled up. 72 barrel per second. Well within uh, our two belt limit here. Um, we don't need these pipes. Don't know where they came from. We do need a layout of belt that's gonna reach everything though. How much does it take? This is 36 per second. 36 per second. Let's just aim one belt at the first... Well, it's actually like the first two and a half. Just need to keep this one going. Can we do this a little bit neater? No, we don't have room. Okay. Let's just do it like this, I think. Do you need a splitter? Like so. And that should be that. Next rate we're going to get of beryllium powder, 74 per second, 74.4 to be precise, which is going to support uh, 46 industrial furnaces. I don't suppose that could be divisible by 6, could it? 7.62 blocks like this. Uh, I think we'll go for a different layout here. After all that. We may or may not going uh, end up going with the... We don't need the Vulcanite blocks, so no long arm inserters. We may share the... Uh, wait, let's count. How many uh, ingots are we going to get out of this whole thing? 74.4 brilliant powder. And it was... Uh, 46 furnaces that that can support. That would only give us 10.3 beryllium ingots per second. So yeah, we can absolutely share the output belt and then filter from there with the sand, if we so desire. But more to the point, this is about the smallest... We can go for keeping the furnaces together. Not much beryllium powder input required, so we can have these share input belts. Put these a bit closer. Double it. Should be fine. Um, it's gonna need an underground. I 
actually, if we've got these in sets of six, uh, we should probably keep the pairs of inserters together. like this and that's already connected substations can go here and how many of these can we fit If we move this over five tiles, do more. Wait, is that four, five, six? Yeah, we can just barely uh, get six rows of these. So how much is this? Um, 70 furnaces, that's... Wasn't that actually pretty close to... In fact, that's more than we can support with the beryllium powder. Oh. And apparently we're missing a couple over here. So, our net rate of beryllium powder, if it looks like this, why did the bots do it that way? We're consuming an extra 39.2. Let's trim it down. 74 beryllium powder, 74.4 rather. Uh, 46 machines. That is... that's already 48. But I would like to minimize the number of beacons that we use here. So let's see. That's 48. That's actually kind of perfect. Yeah. Let's just go keep the 48 in the middle. And and then we need to merge and split. Probably something like this. Actually, can we do a corner one? Is that going to be better? I think it ate some rails on the right. Oh, we had some rails here that I deliberately removed. That's okay. The only output stations we're going to need are... I guess if we do it like this, we're not going to have room for processing beryllium plate and aeroframe poles and everything in this block, but that's fine. So we're just going to have uh, ingots here and sand here. And to do it like that, to merge and split all of the powder. I would like... I should actually make like a boomerang version of this. What I want is the four belts of powder to go in this way and then come straight back this way. Which maybe we can do. 
that's already going there. This one is going here. This one is going here. And this one is going here. That was easier than I expected. Let's make a blueprint for it. Uh, four to four, boomerang, lane balance. So it's kind of hard to follow, but that is actually... Uh, that is actually the equivalent to this thing, I'm pretty sure. You can sort of trace everything and see where it goes. Kind of. Maybe get rid of that one underground on the bottom right first? Oh yeah, that too. Rip. Uh, select new contents, remove this stuff, and we're good. Right then. How many inputs do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, or four if I do a splitter thing. One, two, three, four. I think, uh, I think for the sand, we might just have it go somewhere else. This will obviously go in the middle here. And can we get a nice consistent shape here? Yes. Fantastic. That should be moved up a tile, though. And then... Bring this over. Oh, we've got five inputs. Silly me. I don't suppose one of these is less than a belt. It is significantly less than a belt. Wait, half of this whole thing is only 37.2, actually. So we could... Well, if we do it that way, we'd have to, like, split this into two before we do it, but I think that's fine. We could actually combine all of that into two belts and then split it into four. Or, instead of doing a giant merger splitter, we could do... Something symmetrical where we merge all of these and then split them to here and here might be better. I am glad I came up with this blueprint just now, though. That's neat. So, this is 37 beryllium powder per second. Um, we're going to have to have another split here. That's going to go somewhere else. This goes over this way somewhere. And this comes over here. Bring that over this way. And then we just merge these. Should be pretty straightforward actually. Just tentatively draw that out, and we might change it later. Don't actually need to block this, because... This is going to go here, and then this is going to go here. Never knew you could just select new content for an existing blueprint. Oh yeah, that, that feature did not always exist. It is quite neat to be able to update a blueprint that way. 
as opposed to destroying the whole thing and starting over. Especially if you've done a lot of clicks and typing to lay out the icons, the name, and the description. And whether or not it takes modules, uh, tiles, train fuel, entities, station names, snap to grid. I think there's also... Was a time when you couldn't delete them? They used to be physical items, Blueprints did. That was, uh... That was the bad old days, absolutely. Also, Mad Mike, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And, uh, Gazownik, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Um, uh, but yeah, I do like where this is going. Um, we probably won't do the sand down the middle thing. And we don't need this at all in that case. Also, I may as well put this here. And then... Uh, this one goes here. And we'll probably end up copy-paste flipping that. We can obviously bring this up a tile. Probably. Well, we could definitely bring this part up a tile as well. If we bring this over here... That one's going to go over there. Uh, I'll move this just for a second so that I can do this. And then... Not sure what that underground is doing. Oh, I see. So this is the one that we need to put a filter on. Also, that does not look right. There we go. So, half of our beryllium uh, powder. 37.2 per second, well within blue belt bandwidth. Half from there goes over here. All of this goes in here. All of this goes in here. We merge, we split. And there's our input. Next, we are going to copy all of this, flip, can't flip with industrial furnaces. We're going to temporarily, using the navsat, this blueprint will disappear once I leave navsat mode. Just going to remove the furnaces, flip that, this goes here. And then we can copy in the furnaces. It's even got the substations nice and symmetrical now. Okay. So here we will have... This goes in here. This probably just goes straight in here, and this one goes here, feels a little weird that those both tilt the same direction, but because of this bit that makes sense. We need to remember to output our sand as well. And I think I'll just bring it around the side here. That's a little bit unfortunate. Let's do this. Underground there. 
the splitter like so. Uh, I don't know where this sand is gonna going to escape. We obviously need to. Add a little bit of underground to make this work. And like this again. Thank you for the follow, uh, Takioni. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Down the middle. And lastly, this one goes here. Cool. Now all we need to do is add a pickup for sand. Uh, right side. I think it goes here. And signals go here. Don't need this part. And we're going to change the name of this one to send. And the active provider chest signals that it's a pickup, but it's a pickup that we desperately want to keep empty. So I'm going to set the priority here to 100. The reason for that is because sand is just a byproduct of what we really want to make here. Um, so we want to make sure this storage for it doesn't get full, otherwise it'll stop the beryllium. And then... I think we've actually maybe finished this part. I'm sure there's some little thing I've forgotten somewhere. Uh, oh, Cryonite, that's right. We're gonna get Cryonite from here. That's, I think, the only physical input besides Beryl that this entire thing needs. Let's check. Cryonite and Beryl. Yep. Um, and we're gonna need to connect... I don't know if it's going to matter if we put one storage tank or the other connected to the uh, sulfuric acid or the water. We need to make sure there's always uh, some room left in the pipes for the water because we do get water, even if just a little bit, uh, as a byproduct from this process here. It's a lot of deconstructors that I've ended up with in my inventory. But I can't actually delete this until it contains something. Now, how much water are we going to need overall? Uh, net rate is only 20 per second. Wait, why did we get a warning sound there? Oh, I think this part doesn't have any effect on the consumption of water. But I would still like to make sure everything's... Okay, yeah. 100 water per second, net rate is actually 20 per second, so I think it'll be fine to just have the water delivered by train. And considering I only see one train currently picking up water, it looks like we're not overdoing it at the moment. So... The one little problem I haven't solved here yet is getting cryonite. 
uh, into all of these uh, beryllium hydroxide machines. But it's obviously not going to be too difficult to have the belt just come down here. Wait, how much cryonite do we need for the whole thing? I think it's it's way less than one belt. In fact, that can't be right, can it? Less than one per second for the whole thing? Is it negative 0 0.067 for one machine? And we have 10 of them. Yeah, less than one per second cryonite, this entire, uh, entire build. So, in that case, let's do the slowest unloader that we have. since it's absolutely not going to matter if we have gaps or anything. And then... Bring it around this way. This underground actually needs to go here, so it doesn't line up with this. Let's check. If I keep taking undergrounds this way, it's actually going to run into some problems. Uh, but if I use this horizontal set of tiles right here, that's going to be completely free. So let's just do it like this. And then hmm. If I do it one tile further down, we could do this a little bit neater. Normally I wouldn't have an inserter picking up off the corner. But uh, that's unfortunate. Uh, we could just do it like this. Uh, this one goes here, then we use undergrounds and continue like so. Cool. So this does go here. I think this is long enough now that we'll use another underground belt. Looks a little bit better. You can put cryonite in middle next to substations. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Absolutely. Um, we could squeeze this through here as well, actually. That might be... That might be neater. In fact, that will be neater. Uh, let's probably do it that way. Since the rate is so slow, uh, all we have to do is split things until they go where we want them. Don't have to really think this through very much. This goes here. Then... Barely reaches. Fantastic. Let's do something similar over this way. T 
continue. Uh, that's a problem, actually. I could instead... No, I couldn't. Oh, yes I could. Okay. And then that goes there, and that goes there. If we're going to do it that way, I would like to be consistent, though. It would be easier to put one belt in sideways through machines. Um, we don't have room to get the undergrounds through here, because this one has to be down... This is max length. Uh, this particular bit of underground belt. Uh, so. Let's change this one as well. On tiles above beacon. Uh, we could do that. We're almost finished with this build, though. It's fine. Let's put this down here. And this one goes over here. And... That can probably reach now. Fantastic. This... Oh, that's a problem. We can do it up here. It's fine. Uh, we're not getting through that way, though. I probably should have looked ahead sooner. Hmm. Unless we use some um, red belt? The throughput's definitely going to be sufficient. So this one goes here. That would be red belt. That's too far. And then... Oh, I forgot to copy the most important part, sort of. And can we get this through here? Gonna have to do it down this way. It's either this or start over, just to do it a bit different, so I'd rather get this part done. It also kind of makes it a little bit clearer what's going on here, the inputs. That goes there. Um, this goes here. How far does this reach? Do it like that. Oh, so that should be our Crynite. Um, I don't think it's going to make any difference really which one's water or sulfuric acid. I'll do water up here, blue things on this side, weird colored stuff on this side. That's slightly unfortunate, where these pipes are going to line up. Let's do it like this. I don't think that looks too terribly bad. 
And then we can obviously get rid of this underground. This one. Sulfuric acid. We could get it, sneak it through here. Actually, if we move these beacons up one tile, well, no, there's nowhere for the pipe to go if it's up here. This is already pretty good. Cool. So, why is there no substation here? Not that we need it, surprisingly enough, but the layout on the map doesn't look completely right. I guess it's not going to look right either way. Right then. These substations here are actually going to be enough. Might make that look a little bit neater. Where's that reach to? I like this more. Although this weird crisscross going on here looks a little bit strange. And can we change these two? And these ones. That looks much better. Alright, cool. And what about the substation in the middle? Can we do better? Not really. How about if we put this here? I think we're ready to summon some trains. Um, obviously we need to finish the outposts, but I'm not too terribly worried about that, as long as the filters go to the right places. Alright, so let's connect these. They're already connected. Fantastic. Uh, same applies over here. So we're going to need a standard drop-off times two. The power connections above the triangles are not symmetrical. True. How about this? Nice. Uh, on this side we're going to want... What does barrel stack do again? hundred. So, barrel, two train loads, and uh, this is sulfuric acid, right? Yes. Sulfuric acid. I'm just going to set this to one train load. I wish it would show stack sizes when hovering over items. Yeah, definitely. Uh, especially when certain mods go changing them. It's not like you can just memorize everything. Oh, wait, let's turn that off. Change the station name before... Uh, what is the station name here? I think that's not Beryl. Where are you going with this? Okay, cool. 
That's Ceridium. Uh, this is actually... Feral. And Sulfuric Acid. Requesta. And we can now turn this on. This one is Cryonite and Water. Requesta. Let's see. Bryonite stacks to 100. So let's ask for two train loads. And water. Uh, just 100k. And we're going to need some non stack request thresholds in order to get the fluid delivered. Cool. Trains should be scheduled to come here within a few seconds or so. Although I would have expected them by now, to be honest. I'm not sure what's happening. Seems a bit odd. I know we've got a million cryonite. Um, cryonite rods are, in fact, completely saturated and not even moving at this stage. So it shouldn't be a problem to get a train to come and pick them up. Maybe there's some other stuff that's higher priority? Nope, this train is just sitting here. Maybe we just didn't have any trains in the depots at that moment? There we go. We've got a lot of trains in the depots, actually. Turn on? I'm pretty sure I did. This one's on, and this one's off. There we go. Emo Bell. I am Sark. It's loaded. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Right then, so this should be Feral. Obviously going to need a separate train to bring the Cryonite. I mean the Sulfuric Acid. I actually thought Sulfuric Acid in my head first, and then I thought Cryonite for some reason. Oh, before this gets here, let's uh, figure out the spacing for this underground. I think double undergrounds there is slightly overkill. I'd like this part to be symmetrical. And then sand goes. Our total sand is going to be less than one belt, right? 12 per second. So. All the way down here. And then just fast inserters doing a balanced load. Everything less than or equal to zero. Negative average from the combinator. Red wire tells us what's in the local chest. And that gets added together implicitly. Um, I could go ahead. Oh, I did name the stations. Fantastic. Beryllium ingots are going to be slow enough for this as well. We do need to actually bring them all together though. Only 10.75 per second. So we're just going to merge them. Um, how's that going to look? Let's do this one as far as the undergrounds can reach, and this one not so much. And then only one output. Uh, 
like so and like so don't forget this part and then that's almost perfect Kind of like this lining up with the substation. Alright, what have we got delivered here? Beryllium, I mean beryl. And we're bringing more beryl instead of the sulfuric acid for some reason. Uh, cryonite is also on its way. So I asked for two train loads of each. Some of it's come out onto the belts. This needs to go here. And uh, the train, LTN is prioritizing the physical over getting any fluid here, it seems like. Chronite seems to have reached everywhere it's supposed to go. Physical items are almost here. And then I had... I wanted to change this pipe as well. There we go. Fantastic. I like the trains arriving almost at the same time. Alright, I think we are probably done here. I just need to see it all working. Next step is uh, beryllium plate and are they called aeroframe poles? Aeroframe pole. Oh. I think we can probably manage that in the rail block just over here. Give the trains a short trip most of the time when they're picking up the beryllium ingots. Actually, I don't know where else we're going to be using the beryllium ingots, but we'll see. This one can go up here, and then... Here comes our sulfuric... Nope. Wait, what? I thought we just got our two loads of... Didn't we just get two deliveries of barrel? And we asked for two deliveries and the request threshold is an entire train load? We've also got sulfuric acid. Oh, that barrel was just... That train was just going back to the depot. Okay, cool. I don't like what I'm seeing with this uh, traffic over here, though. I think we need fluid wagons. I did start working on this, um, but I didn't actually come up with anything I liked yet. But uh, we should probably get a fluid wagon depot that's in the rail blocks. So that we can add some wherever we want and give them shorter trips and not have certain areas relatively high traffic. Um, but yeah, it's not too bad for now. What about water? Why are we still waiting? For a water delivery to be scheduled. There goes our sulfuric acid and a whole lot of healthy looking chemicals being sprayed out of these machines. And that gets us through the first two steps. Uh, unfortunately, oh, we do have some water here. Wait, sneaky, when did that water arrive? I didn't even see it. 
Well, looks like... Why is there only 354 water in the entirety of the storage tank? Oh. Uh, yeah, I should have set this up so that Instead of a request threshold of 16k, uh, what we're going to have instead is a request stack threshold of 160, which is four cargo wagons, and a request threshold of 100,000. Uh, that way, the fluid wagon... It's going to do whichever is smaller. Stack threshold doesn't work for fluid. So we're going to get 16k cryonite rods brought at a time and 100,000 water uh, brought at a time. And we'll do the same for sulfuric acid. Request threshold 100,000. Don't know if you need a block for aeroframe poles. They are like copper wires. Better to rocket ingots or plates. They stack better. Uh, we do get the productivity bonus only if we do it on the ground, though, right? I also want aeroframe poles in the um, rail network for unforeseen requirements. I would like to make more weapon delivery. Oh, we're missing girders. For a second there, I thought we finished clearing out the biters on rows. Nope. We've still got our base in the middle that hasn't been harmed, though. That's good. Um, but yeah. What was I thinking of just a second ago? Here comes our... For some reason, 99,000 water. Uh, I just blanked on something. If it wasn't too important. Oh yeah, um, I'm sure a rail block is going to be more than enough space to do both beryllium plate and the aeroframe poles anyway. Uh... Even if it wasn't, I would probably just do that and then make more rail blocks like that. Because it's going to save uh, some train trips if we don't have to cart around beryllium plate in order to make poles. This placement of fluids in train system is quite a bottleneck. We're only using it when the amount of fluid that we need is not that much. Uh, so, this is actually a net rate of 20 water per second, or 40 sulfuric acid. Uh, that is 2,500 seconds for sulfuric acid for one train trip, or 41 minutes. So, that's not too much trouble. For certain other things, though, for example, making cryonite slush, uh, it turns out the amount of water that we need to support this, at least at the rate that I wanted to build this, with um, eight machines making ice, um, it turns out to get 30 ice per second, we need over 3,000 water. Which, I, until I realized that, um, I was going to do it, I was going to support that with trains, but since I'd already built this mostly, I just added some pipes to have pumps connected directly from uh, a fluid source. Uh, but yeah, the amount of throughput that we need for fluids... Um, it's a bit of a problem, we've actually got, oh, I was going to say we've actually got offshore pumps supporting these ones, but turns out that's a lie, that's just something I intended to do. 
but that's one reason I built these particular oil blocks in a row. We can pretty easily connect water up. Uh, connect all of these up with pipes for the water. And then we'll have some offshore pumps over here. So far it's not big trouble, but if you reach the point where all blocks that need fluids need to run simultaneously, it will be a disaster. Uh, yeah, that doesn't really happen, and even if it does, we've got quite a bit of storage. Like I said, in this case, uh, a single train delivery of sulfuric acid would support this running continuously for over 40 minutes. So, that's not too bad. Um, and this, all of this oil over here, uh, we've actually got a couple of trains delivering water right now, but nothing too severe. Anyway, let's get to, actually before we start on this block, I would kind of like to make the rounds and check on our other planets. There were things that we were doing... Why is this not fun? Oh, there's no delivery cannons. Because there's no heat shielding. Because... Uh, okay, there's a little bit of heat shielding. It's just not enough to support everything here. Why are there no uranium core fragments coming in? Probably because our accumulator charge was not full. Okay. I'm more concerned about the heat shielding. Um, where does that trace back to? Oh, we can just put a beacon here. In fact, there's already a beacon here. We can just... We had efficiencies here temporarily until we got more power produced from the uranium, which now it's very much not a problem. Um, but yeah. Next is... Uh, not Tullabai. Lothar is our other planet supplying uranium. And it seems to be having a problem... Oh, it's just straight up not keeping up. We've got three of these machines making delivery cannon capsules as fast as possible. And it's not quite enough to fire away all of the uranium core fragments. Um, if we make a fourth one, can we keep up? Heat shielding and LDS, absolutely. Uh, copper cable. We're actually producing that here. So, not really, unless we... Did we beacon the copper cable? We did. If we could get this copper cable out, uh, and then get it over here somehow... We could probably make that work. What if we move this chest over one tile, put a long arm here and here. Move this over one tile. And that would allow us to have an underground going up this way. It'll have to be a blue underground. I hope we've got some in stock. I... Yep, we do. Okay. Uh, what about long-arm inserters? Yes. Whoops. Uh, let's go back to Lothar. Move our construction spider in range. 
I'm going to move this over one tile. Long arm inserters go here. Move this over. That can stay. This becomes a long arm. And this moves over. And then blue underground like so. Since we can use this entire belt for... Is a single inserter going to keep up with the explosives? Uh, possibly not. It's actually... We're not actually receiving the explosives consistently enough. Okay, I might have to look into that. Um, we're not sending a signal to send explosives here unless that chest runs out of them. So in that case, we might have to... After what? Each equals one, output one. Everything on the whitelist. This has to be empty. I could change it to less than or equal to one. And make the explosives signal like negative a hundred let's make it negative 200 just to be sure each less than or equal to one so we're still just requesting explosives and hopefully that'll get the one delivery cannon that we've got sending explosives to Send a few stacks so that we can keep going. But I wonder if it can keep up still. It'll at least maybe reduce the gap between deliveries. I'll have to have a look at the actual... Um... There they go. I wonder if that's going to help with the bottleneck already as well, actually. It's taking a little longer to empty that belt of explosives. It's still not enough to... ...support all of these. Although, for some reason, there is... We did actually get a delivery cannon capsule to the end of the belt. So maybe it's already not that bad. Yeah, even so, we're not getting explosives sent as far as I would like. Uh, what was the name of that planet again? Lothar? Lothar. So, which one's Lothar? Fornax. Lothar. And... This is actually as fast as one delivery cannon can go. It's actually the recharge time that's the problem. The inserter is fast enough to keep up with that. And have the recipe ready before it recharges. Okay. Since we've got some space here, uh, I propose we just add another one. And... Damn it. 
We're gonna have to have this belt. Instead of snaking this all the way around, I think I would rather... Just have inserted a take from here. And I hope... Uh, we're gonna need another substation. I hope the wire will reach up there, but if it doesn't, we can just, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Piggyback off of connecting to this one and don't have a con uh, condition on it. Alright, where's my red spider? I'm gonna have to go over there and do something. Well, I could send the construction spiders, but red spider is faster. Hey Morpheus Cell, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. You can set a priority in the planet list uh, for the planets you have bases on, and then only show those for quicker access, especially to out-of-system planets. Priority in the planet list. Priority. Oh yeah, that. I should definitely bump up the priority on all of the... Well, no, I can sort by the ones I've visited already. Um, how do I change the priority? It's like that. Okay. Right then. Uh, while we're waiting for that... Wait, I thought I... I thought I already ordered this to be built. What happened? Oh, it was down here. Okay. Construction spiders... Do your thing. That goes there. That goes there. And we have a couple of train stops in... I don't want to copy that. A um, couple of train stops in the middle. This goes here, I believe. And this goes here. And then... Like so. Uh, I think nothing but ingots are going to be dropped off here. Considering we can only make uh, 10 per second. And I'm not sure why... The beryllium powder isn't keeping up. It might just be taking its time saturating the system. It seems like everything's moving at full speed. Oh, these inserters are too slow. Alright. I'm a little bit surprised by that. Let's send the construction spiders over there to fix it. Meanwhile... Oh, I'm not carrying delivery cannons anymore. Luckily I can make one. I'm also missing... A fast inserter. Or two. Okay, so I want this to connect up here. Looks like it can reach directly. Fantastic. And I actually need a third one as well. And copy that setting. We're only going to Put the delivery cannon capsule in if we receive a signal for explosives. And already got the setting correct here. Let's see if it can 
start to accumulate explosives on this belt. It's looking good. It's looking very good. Fantastic. Let's add one more of these. Uh, move this up a tile. Copy this over here. And I think that should easily be enough to support uh, 12 cannons. And that'll give us some decent throughput for infinite uranium. It should get everything saturated with, uh... How did we run out of 238? Because we're doing nothing but 235 here. Uh, in that case... I want to just take the 238 from here, but I want to be careful and make it conditional. Like, if there's, uh, I need a circuit wire, whoops, let's go back. If there's no 238 here, Oh, I connected that to the wrong thing. If 238 equals zero, uh, then by all means, put some 238 on that belt. Can we maybe fit this here? No. No. Let's just do it like this. Same thing here. Same condition. Uh, that's going to be on the wrong... No, it's not. Wrong side of the belt. Fantastic. And that'll keep our production of uranium fuel cells going. Until we run out of 2 million uranium ore, which... Why is this still not built? I think we need a supply of stone or... Um... I think we need a supply of stone. This is not stone. What are we highlighting here? Meteorites. There shouldn't be any meteorites getting through. I hope that happened a long time ago. Anyway, let's grab a whole bunch of stone. Use the construction spider to do it. Uh, I would also like to grab all of the stone that's in range of the Robopot network. It looks like we've already done that. The reason we're getting stone is so that we can get landfill. 1.3k. We do have landfill automated. So we just have to go pick some up. How full is your inventory? Not that bad yet. Okay. It's obviously going to take a few trips to get 
enough landfill to finish this. So I need to remember to come check on this planet every once in a while. I am quite happy with the situation with delivery cannon capsules here now though. We should start to see them accumulating at the end here. Yes, fantastic. Which means... We're going to be getting uh, 48 uranium core fragments per second. That is quite good. So that's just dropping in here all the time. Fantastic. How much have we got? 10k, 11k, and we're still processing some from here. I might have done this layout a little bit different if I'd known it was always going to be uh, just one of these stations holding any of the core fragments. But I guess if that's the case, why bother having this much capacity? It's fine. Now then, we got this working. Beautiful. Let's run back for a quick resupply, because why not? Uh, and let's see. All of these furnaces are glowing. Love to see it. That means we don't have any more bottlenecks to fix up here. I did see this one was off ever so briefly. Um, I think we did... Yeah, this can do 76 beryllium powder per second, and we're producing... 74, so that's actually perfect. How much sand have we got out of this? 10k already? Wow. Just as a side product, we've got 10,000 sand. Uh, so, let's begin processing the beryllium ingots. Uh, first thing we're going to do is build out our usual repeatable layout of eight machines. With Beacon. Where is Beacon? Give it some power, and then see what that rate's going to look like. Eleven point eight eight, and we consume two point two five per second. Considering we're only making ten ingots per second. Uh, actually, 2.25, five sets like this could consume all of the beryllium ingots we're making here. One, two, three, four, five. It would be pretty awkward fitting it in here. And also doing the arrow frames as well. Um, but yeah. Let's just put these one, two, three tiles apart. So if my math's correct, this will consume all of the ingots 
that we can currently produce. Uh, not quite. Make it six. I've been watching some older recordings, day full by on YouTube. Is the resource destroyer still around? Has it been improved upon, or is it still the same? Uh, cool bean. It is mostly... Sorry, cool band name. Uh, it is mostly still the same. I made some minor changes to it. I don't really remember what I changed. Uh, I should probably set this up for different resources, but because the resource that we're overflowing on the most changed from stone to coal. Uh, I changed it from... I changed the recipe on these delivery cannon capsules from stone to coal. Um, but now... things have changed again and we're not actually sending any coal here to get rid of. We've actually... We've actually got a lot more copper than anything else. And one improvement that I would really like to make to this is have it able to switch between... I mean, it would take... Uh... It would take crafting combinators to have this switch between different resources for what we're going to throw into the cannons so we have something to fire here. It hasn't actually been working for a while, but considering none of these are completely full yet, I don't know if that's a problem. Um, actually, it probably is because we're eventually going to have too much copper over here. Theoretically. Don't think we're getting there just yet. Copper plate storage is completely full. Copper ore storage is half full. So, yeah, that is sort of a problem. Since we're using bots here anyway, I should probably use requester chests uh, so that we can bring whichever resource. We do have a circuit controlling when we put the delivery cannon capsules in. But... Yeah, because this is belt, fe belt fed, I haven't actually left myself a great way to sort this out. I also wonder how many cannons we actually need to fire to destroy the destroy these requester chests, and I would rather use the minimum number. So I think what we would need to do is look at whichever resource we've got the most of. It's actually a tricky circuit, but um NG figured it out for me. Do I still have that lying around somewhere? Get minimum? Uh, average of end signals. Spent a while. Oh, here it is. Max of end signals. It actually takes quite a few... Wait, I think this was my attempt. NG's was like, I was able to compress it into uh, like a 3x3 three three block. I may have included it. Oh, here it is. This circuit has certainly... The, the loader part of this has certainly changed a bit, but down here is what I'm actually looking for. And
And what it does is takes a set of signals and just outputs the thing that we have the most of. So let me just head over there now. And I think I would like to set the recipe. We're about to find out if six cannons is enough. Um, I would like to set these recipes based on whatever resource we have the most of in here. Let's check if I've got this right first. Constant combinator goes... Uh, I'm not actually entirely sure where the input is. Let's have a look at this again. It's the top right one. And only the top right one. Okay. So we're going to connect this here. And we're going to say... Iron, copper, stone, coal. And it's outputting all of them, I think. I think this is the output. If I go iron 2, it only outputs iron. Copper 2, it outputs both. Uh, coal 3, it only outputs coal. Fantastic. And what we're going to do is just... Look at the contents of all of these. It should be almost exactly the same on the other side. And then we're going to go crafting combinators. Whoops, I didn't mean to craft them. No overflow chest. That's a good point, actually. Uh... Let's do active provider chests for the overflow behind left, behind right. It already spat stuff out. Oh, because we're not giving it a signal for a for a recipe. Okay. I wish we didn't just put a couple of capsules into the logistic network, but. We'll sort that out. So we need some decider combinators here because we need to convert those signals. Um, if iron greater than zero, output crafting combinator recipes, recipe delivery cannon capsule iron ore. Hey, super cap. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And thank you for the raid. Welcome, raiders. How are you all doing today? We are currently updating our item destroying system uh, so that the cannons will run off of whatever we've got the most uh, of in these chests to get rid of them. A Velduck. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So that is recipe delivery cannon capsule copper ore. If copper ore is greater than zero. Stone, same thing. And then coal. Recipe delivery cannon capsule coal. Ah! If coal is greater than zero. Item destroying system. Yes, indeed. Okay, so... We're going to set these to... Discard fluids, don't care. Empty insert of hands. Keep crafting until zero. This one's behind the left. And then... Oh, we need to actually 
input the resources as well. Uh... Hmm. I think I'll output one instead of the input count, or whichever resource we've got the most of, and I'll multiply that by 50. Maybe more than 50. Uh, what am I doing? Each times 100. Output each. And we're going to set requests for all of these based on that. Actually, I'll use a red wire just to distinguish it. Uh, to set the recipes on the crafting combinators. And I'll also... I'll put some substations down here now so that we can have the wires jump off of that and everything can look consistent. Okay. So instead of connecting like so, this can go here, this goes here, set requests, and set requests, and then stack inserters. Green wire goes here, red wire goes here. Uh, Robo ports go here. And it looks like. How low did that get on hit points? Ouch. Where does it say the hit points? Down the bottom. Health 350. Each of these does 50 damage. So we actually need seven of these to fire at the same time in order to destroy all of the chests. Um, I think I'll get rid of this row. And... Just do the same thing on the other side. Like this. And we need to connect the circuit wire. There we go. That should do it. They will already have some delivery cannon capsules in there all, uh, already, so they're going to fire sort of erratically. But once the whole thing gets going, um, they will all fire at the same time as soon as the bots stop moving. And to remind ourselves how that works, we read the default signals out of read robot statistics. Uh, X and Y represents available and total logistic bots. X minus Y we output as logistic bots. And we do something similar for construction bots. When everything equals zero, uh, then we send a signal of delivery cannon capsule. We've also got a little timer here, so um, so this is actually like what would normally be the constant combinator for the timer. So when this is active, the timer starts ticking forward again, and 
Only for a few frames at the end of it. Oh. Well, there's your problem. Only for a few frames at the end of the timer. Uh, is it going to... Tell these filter inserters that they're allowed to pick up delivery cannon capsules. So they're all going to pick those up at the same time. And there we go. Now we can run our uh, cannons here on whatever resource we've got the most of. And just a reminder that these are stations of last resort, which only get delivered to when there's nowhere else for certain infinite resources to go, which get produced at arbitrary ratios. The belt you placed at the unloader is backwards? At the unloader. Oh, true. Thank you. Uh, this is fine. Cool. Although I am curious that there was already copper here when we're currently still dropping off copper ore into storage. But I think that... I think this was probably full earlier and then... And then copper ore got sent here, and then we had a burst of copper usage or something. But yeah, this is a much better system. Since we have to use bots for this, I should have done this in the first place. So we don't have some arbitrary resource having to be belted down here. And we don't need an arbitrary signal of coal either. Oh, this should not be connected to these anymore. That may have thrown something off, but it doesn't make too much of a difference. Maybe the storage station had reached its limit, and the next available one was Destroyer. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, although I am surprised that we're only half full on copper, if that's what happened earlier. It is nice to see such a ludicrous amount, literally over a million copper plate in storage at the moment, and that's not counting copper ore. Uh, we've also got... Wow, we've got stone in storage. Uh, we have 1.1 million steel in storage, even though they, even though we're struggling with iron. Uh, so that's cool, I guess. Maybe I should make the pickup station. Maybe I should make the pickup station for steel from storage a higher priority than picking up steel from the smelters. And that way we're not going to be constantly sending iron back to make more steel. Um... When we've got a million, literal, we have literally a million steel in storage. So yeah, I think we will bump up the pri provide priority here. You can turn the steel into barrels, scrap the barrels, recycle the scrap for other materials. I don't want to get rid of the steel, um, I just want to... I want to use the steel that we have in storage and not worry about smelting more steel for a while. So that we can get a nice juicy throughput of iron 
uh, while we slowly run out of that ludicrous amount of steel in storage. Alright, cool. Although, I guess... That is actually... Oh, I missed a digit. 62 and a half trainloads of steel. Wow. That is really, really quite a lot. So it's only iron and coal and uranium, of course, uh, for the basics that we don't have some in storage. Uh, we do have a much better flow of uranium ore now. Coming from the uranium core fragments. Especially from uh, Lothar. I mean, this is more than a blue belt of uranium core fragments. So that is quite good. Although the core fragments themselves don't break down to be that much uranium. Even if this was going at full speed, which it never does. Uh, 53 uranium ore per second is nothing to scoff at. Oh. Actually, no, this is fine. That should lead to the train dropping off on this side. Yeah, that's actually intended. But yeah, uh, productivity modules aside, we only get two uranium ore out of 16 core fragments. Uh, multiply that by 1.32. Uh, we get 0.17 uranium ore per uranium core fragment. That's actually so much sadder than I thought. But as long as... As long as we get enough uranium to keep all of the nuclear plants running and slowly accumulate it, I don't particularly care. Now then, back to our next build. So this should be more than enough to consume all of our beryllium ingots. Seems like just one of these blocks is more than enough for all of the beryllium we've got coming in. Our beryllium planet... Launch on cargo full. Novice core fragment beryllium... Uh, barrel. We do have 15 uranium here. But from what I've seen... It doesn't check the stack sizes, it just launches when cargo is 500 out of 500. Launch delayed. Waiting for target landing pad to empty. Oh. Oh! Okay, cool. I'm glad I checked that. Uh, just one minor detail I need to change here, actually. We're going to blacklist. And we're going to pick up everything except barrel core fragments. This gets taken to the trash train. So we're about to get a delivery of, from roll, 49,000 or so, 49.9 thousand uh, barrel core fragments. And once that arrives, uh, we can once again begin to get a feel for whether this is enough to keep up with the amount that we're sending in. I imagine it probably is, but I could be wrong. 
here comes our juicy, juicy... Oh. I should probably do something about that. If we're going to have this fully automated... Um... I should probably have some roboports here. At the very least, I've only got one handy, which is fine for now, I guess. Uh, let's do a storage chest here. And we're just going to empty everything that ends up in storage. And I'll throw in some construction bots. That's super overkill. That's fine. We also need some repair perks. Which means I need to organize automatic delivery of the repair perks. Hmm. I also need another fast inserter. Oh, right. Um, I would love to combine this station, but then again, I'll just do this. I'm going to have a standard drop-off. Oh, that's a provider, actually. My RoboPort's not doing anything, because I have no robots. Um, request threshold... Let's say one stack. Short trains. And... Passive provider chest. I could probably put this a bit further back. And we're just going to pick up... Make it a stack filter. Repair packs. Actually, I should probably just move... Well, no, I can't, can I? Does it tell us how many repair packs are in this? It actually does. Okay, cool. Um, in that case, it also tells me how many bots we have if I do this. Any total construction bots. Fantastic. And we can put this straight here. Direct insert from the train. And we're going to request... Actually, let me do this. Just so we can see it work. Uh, request stack threshold. Actually, let's just do a request threshold. Of like one. No, make it... I would like it to be one for the construction bots, but significantly more for the repair packs. It's fine, let's just do one stack. And we're going to ask for... 50 construction bots and... four hundred repair packs. That should be a negative, actually. Uh, turn that off before we connect it. Station name is... Construction bot and repair pack requester. And then... Get that signal from the... I kind of feel like putting it on the other side of the rail, actually. 
Let's bring it up here. Right after we get rid of this wire. And that should be as close as we can bring that stack filter insert up. Uh, I guess it doesn't need to be a filter. We can only put three types of things in here. I don't think we need any logistic bots for this one. The construction bots will automatically put everything into storage when it's marked for deconstruction. Fantastic. Okay, that should be... Let's actually put this here. And this can go somewhere a bit more symmetrical. Let's turn this on. Let's also... Well, most of the time we're only going to be outputting cargo rocket sections and space capsules. There's also going to be a little bit of uranium and occasionally uh, maybe some scrap if this automatically marks the the crashed parts for deconstruction. So a fast inserter is going to be... what? Oh, okay. Yeah, a fast inserter is going to be as fast as a stack inserter here most of the time. And our train is already coming. Fantastic. Fifty construction bots and four hundred uh, repair packs. The requests on this will be set thusly, right now. And we're going to be loading one thing at a time with the precise loader here. Alright, so 35 more swings of that, and then it will be delivering both of those directly into this RoboPort. So on the off chance that something else bad happens here, as long as we don't lose the RoboPort, or the train stop, or I guess this constant combinator, uh, everything else should get repaired. Actually, that's as long as nothing actually gets destroyed, which, uh, that's what we're counting on. Already we're up to another 4.8 thousand, 4.9 thousand core fragments. Fuel is... well, we've got a bunch of storage, so this time at least fuel is easily keeping up. Uh, but yeah. This takes longer to load than I thought it would. Oh, and here's our robots and stuff. Fantastic. Alright. And here's our full throughput of barrel core fragments. Which gives us, uh, let's see, 178 barrel per second, and this can only consume 72 barrel per second, but core fragment consumption is 216 per second, actually. So that's actually bottlenecked on 180 per second with the belts. Um, I don't think... We're definitely not getting 180 per second here. Eight. In fact, this is only 18? What? 
I thought this was higher. I remember... Are some of these, like, broken? No mineable resources? What? 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 I think something is a little bit bugged. We can't... I can't deconstruct it with... Rate calculator says there's 11 of these. Um, selecting them with control C says there's only two. Uh-oh. That's a bug. It was fixed in one of the newer patches. I see. Might be time to make a backup and see if I can... Yeah, you can see only two of the core miners are running, but they're suffering from the inefficiency as if we had 11, question mark? Maybe 9? It's because they got destroyed by biters, right? It is part 98 already? Yeah. SpaceX is... Uh, it takes some time. Not that I've been playing it in the most efficient way, but still. Well, time efficient, you know what I mean. Uh, but yeah. For now... The reason I was looking at all those ratios is I'm wondering if I should actually build this bigger. And maybe we end up needing... Uh two of these, but I don't think so. I think this is fine for now. Ingot's net rate is negative 2.7 if I do that. If I use one less block, it is... oh. Negative 0.49 per second. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, so let's just do five of these, I guess. And then we're going to do... This is really not going to take up an entire rail block, is it? How much beryllium plate can we expect out of this? I think if a bot placed it, it had a chance to bug out. I would have guessed uh, maybe it was something to do with the biters having destroyed them, but it could be that too, I guess. 59 beryllium plate per second is not bad, actually. But we need SFA for the input ingots. So I think we'll start with the slow input. And then just split it like so. Actually, maybe we could put this more in the middle so we can do it like this. That's actually pretty much perfectly in the middle. So I think I'd like to do it this way. And then... Substations are going to have to move. To where exactly? Uh, here should be fine. For some reason I'm always lacking fast inserters these days. Give to me some fast inserters, please. Okay. Input goes like this. And then... Like 
like so. Output, of course, goes here. What are we going to get here? How many output belts? Some awkward number, no doubt. thing is like one and a half blue belts per... wait, what? There we go. 59 beryllium plate. Uh, sorry about the firework noises. Should I mute or does that not sound bad? reaches. I think this will look a bit better. Sounds funny. Okay. Little pops. Yeah. It's not a war zone, I promise. This goes here and here and that actually doesn't need a splitter. Also, Majagus, Mass uh, mass, pink pajamas, good to see you again. Happiness cookie, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I was kind of involved for a little while there. Alright, so if this is gonna be... Uh, like one and a half blue belts... Well, the first thing I want to do is actually have another block like this, kind of... Except this is going to be every frame poles. And what's the rate going to look like here? It's actually a net rate of negative 6.1 beryllium plate. Not what I was looking for. So if I were to lay it out like this... Um, it's not going to be a great ratio with beacons and stuff. We actually need 8 to 5. I think what we'll do instead is merge everything together. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Let's do it in the middle here. Actually, why don't we just throw one of these down, and then like so. That's a little bit unfortunate. This goes here, actually. Which makes that underground look kind of weird. Alright. Copy, paste, flip. And... For some reason, that doesn't... It doesn't line up the same because this part isn't perfectly... central. Actually, I th think some undergrounds here might look better. Let me just move those over a bit. Okay. Although we should be merging this all into two belts, shouldn't we? Uh, hmm. Do we have like a 6 to 2? Oh my goodness, that's not what I was looking for. That's terrifying.
that is very weird looking. But allegedly it is a 6 to 2. Actually, we don't really need a balancer. Um, we just need to merge it all. So... If we just do it like this, that'll be fine. of these does it take to consume? Let's actually consume like half of the beryllium plate to make poles, why not? So that way there'll be plate available for pickup. Uh, this is actually 47.5 aeroframe poles per second. And we're only using 18 of the plate. Okay. Why don't we just... That is... Getting to be a bit much fireworks. Hey, Mannix. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I might just uh, beat the mic for a minute and hope this finishes. So this will give us two blue belts of aeroframe poles very easily. Um, actually, that's less than... Oh yeah, that's just a little bit more than two belts. Alright, cool. cool. We'll go for two blue belts of aeroframe poles and the rest can go... Um, The rest can go to the station. I guess we will actually use this right here. Inputs. Actually, that input can go there. Outputs, like so. Actually, like so. Um, I didn't lay in this out correctly. I was going to have these look a little bit like this, but then where did these go? Could just squeeze them through the middle. And then this goes here. Oh, we don't need to... Oh, we kind of do. Okay. those back together. Aeroframe poles. Uh, I guess I do need to split this one. And this one. 
No, it would be better if I just leave that one as it is and then bring these two together. And then... That's going to be on the outside. That's going to be inside. This can go like so. And this goes up here a bit more. It looks like we can actually fit all of this to have an output station in the middle. Maybe. And if that's the case, um, then we leave room for doubling it if we need to later on. Yeah, we could definitely change how these splitters go. Uh, let's have a look at this. So if we have our output stations down the middle, like so. Kind of like we've done with solar panels, accumulators. If we're going to have two output stations, we have to do this awkward, not quite symmetrical thing here. We don't have room for a long train on both sides. I don't think. I think we do actually. One, two, three, four, five. The locomotive can stick out into the uh, curve. And this one goes here. I think we have room to pull that off. We just have to change this a little bit. I don't suppose that reaches through there, no. Do this. And then... Is it possible to move all of this up a tile or two? Or maybe we could make this more, like, horizontal. Yeah, that'd actually make it a lot easier. Uh, so... Let's see if that can fit. Mm, not really. Because we need to have... Wait, how much input do we need here? Uh, let's connect that up again. Less than one blue belt of input for both of these together, which means we could put two of these in a row. And the outputs going to have to go a little bit like this, because each side is going to do... Oh, each side's actually just 45 per second. We're going to bottleneck it on the belt. So all we have to do is put the stuff that's on the left side of the belt here on the right. And vice versa on the other side. Yeah, this is looking much simpler. Let's get rid of all this. Um, we do actually just want to squeeze this down to two belts. And... Okay. Stops 
go here. Train can already come in this way. This needs to curve down like so. And on the other side, it'll look like this. Belts are one way. You have to give them a direction when you place them. Indeed. Good morning. Stupid question. When it is written 45 per second for blue belts, is it? Oh, if you mean uh, one or both sides of the belt, it's both sides combined. So... When an inserter takes from a machine and puts on the belt, it'll always put it on this side. Unless you're using some mods. So if you only use uh, one side of this belt, it's actually going to be 22.5 per second maximum. Which is why I've got this splitter here, moving these items to this side of the belt. And these inserters will be putting... In, uh, the poles up on this side. Sorry for my English. No trouble at all. I don't see anything wrong with your English. Snake Snake. Welcome, welcome. Might be doing well. That splitter trick blew my mind. I always built some strange underground belt swap construction. Uh, the splitters didn't used to have this uh, these features or any of these features. So you would have to do something like uh, this. for example. But yeah, that does save a little bit of space. Not that we need it in this instance. Uh, so, I would like to... I guess if... I guess it's okay if that's a regular signal this time. Um, there should be plenty of room here. I don't particularly mind if a train is stopped here and this one has to wait for it. It's not going to happen very often. And this way we don't have to much change the signaling over here. We do need the train to be allowed to leave. Um... This train won't be allowed to go this way, that's good. So trains are only allowed to go this way from here, as opposed to up here. Belt speed on the tooltip says two ways of belts then. One blue belt full is 45 per second, that's correct. Um, as opposed to 90. So we need two blue belts to support 90 items per second. This is going to go here, and here, and actually, if we can be consistent and cover all of those, I think that looks better. Okay, no worries. Also, Kellogg's, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Now then. We have our stations. We just need uh, some outputs here. We're going to do a left side pickup, right side pickup. I guess the way I've laid it out, if we're going if we're going to double this later on, we'll have to have um, inserters on both sides to well, no, we can easily belt that across. It's fine. But yeah. We're basically going to do this. And then we'll swap things out. Uh, so 
So we're using undergrounds. Looks a little bit better. That looks weird. There we go. We also need to split... Um, split off from here and take... Uh, let's do this. Take one full belt. Actually, if we're going to do that, we need to split it here. We'll take... Actually, no. Because this entire side can do 29 per second. We had, oh, we do need 36 per second. Yeah, no, that'll, that'll be fine. Okay. Now the undergrounds here look a bit out of place. Let's move this over here. And then station on the right. Oh, that's actually... Yeah, that's one tile too close. Let's move all of this up a little bit. And then... Uh, might be better, actually, if this goes the other way. And in that case, I didn't have to move all of that. At all. But it's fine. This goes here. And then some substations. Bring this one over by... Oh, it's already powered. Wait, what? Oh, these won't be powered if I do that. Okay, yeah, no, that's fine. Oh. So this will be... Uh... What are we building here? Aeroframe pole provider? Uh, no thank you, I would not like to respawn actually. I don't know how that happened. Okay. And then... Beryllium plate... Provider. Gonna need some power for those as well. Uh, luckily, our substations reach nicely. Alright, now we just need to set our... Uh, Brilliant Ingot Requester. We won't be needing this one. And if we want to double this whole thing... Though, there will be a slight change to some of the belts at the end, but other than that, that'll be pretty easy. Cool. Let's put in a standard drop-off. Connect this to here. And this to here. And we are requesting... Actually, what's the stack size? And... Oh, it's a hundred. Why is beryllium ingot stacked to a hundred? I thought some other kinds of ingots... Iridium ingot stacks to twenty, but beryllium ingot stacks to a hundred. 
curious. Well, in that case, uh, beryllium ingot, 16,000. Shall you make it two train loads? 32,000. And I don't know that we're even going to have enough yet to trigger delivery. We should definitely add this uh, symbol here already. Beryllium ingot. How much have we got? 16k. That's just enough for a train to be scheduled to pick these up. Uh, but before that happens, let's correct the name of this station. Beryllium Ingot Provider. A Sigma Bean. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And yeah, uh, apart from LTN taking its sweet time to recognize that we've got enough ingots to trigger a delivery here. Uh, it looks like this is all set up. A quest stack threshold, four cargo wagons, asking for two train loads of beryllium ingot, long trains only, and We do have 16,000. Oh, there it is, finally. Nice. I think I should probably add another depot, uh, maybe up here or somewhere. There's definitely a lot of incentive to have more depots than you need because it'll significantly shorten the train trips. It's also a good idea to, when you can, put things right next to where they're going to be going. Um, there's only so much you can do there. But let's go really in plate and aeroframe pole. What do the poles stack to? These set up correctly. Looks good to me. Here comes our train. And it would probably help if I had some inserters here. Alright, let's set the filters to beryllium ingot. I love that pattern you get when you do that. It's like a Mexican wave of uh, inserters. Uh, let's double check that we don't need any speed here. Only 11 beryllium ingots per second, so yeah, that's totally fine. It's kind of cool, mesmerizing, watching the yellow inserters all swinging in sync. Love it. And belt missing over here. This is why you test things. All of the machines appear to be in motion. And all of these ones uh, will be in motion. Although, with the way I've set up the splitters, um, we're not actually going to get 
the amount that we need for that to go full speed. 60 per second, and we need 36 per second. So we want to totally prioritize this. Unless we want half of the plate to go to beryllium plate and then half go to aeroframe poles. That might actually be wiser question mark. What does this stack do? I'm dying to know. Only 50. That's not great. Uh, one becomes two. And it looks like this stacks to 100. So that is actually a lot of stack size. Ignoring the productivity modules, it's a quarter the stack size efficiency. Uh, so... You could say we're paying for four times as many cargo rockets to send rods to space with the productivity bonus. But I don't know... It depends on how much barrel we need, ultimately. Whether it's justifiable to... Oh, it stacks to even more than 100. Wow. That changes the calculation a little bit. It might be worth foregoing the productivity bonus in space for the uh, aeroframe poles. Barrel plate stacks to 200. Yeah, it looks like it. Since it once it went past 100, I assumed it was going to. I was I was guessing that it's going to 200. Okay. Uh, looks like we need faster inserters for this. Actually, it might be the case that. Oh, make this three. If we allow each inserter to go one stack ahead of the average, do fast inserters keep up with this? And the answer is yes. So we didn't actually need stack inserters to keep up with this. Although I think we're bottlenecking on fast inserters here, actually, which shouldn't be a surprise, considering that this is a full blue belt. Okay. That's looking a bit better. So can fast inserters keep up with two full blue belts if they are allowed to go ahead of the average? It looks like the answer is yes. Good to know. Now then. I think that ticks off the last of our slightly exotic resources. We can now send all of this to space. Which means it is well and time, uh, well and truly time, to be expanding the, uh, to be building a rail block, a uh, rail block system in space, and pretty soon we'll be doing all sorts of new science up there. Although we are still suffering throughput wise a little bit. Uh, for which resource? Coal. That's a little bit surprising. I think coal is the reason we're not getting our... Yeah. Coal is the bottleneck for our astronomic science packs at the moment. Can we do anything else without coal? 
got no significant data here. Oh, that's right. I forgot. I didn't fix this yet. Uh, I stand corrected. Apparently I did fix it. I didn't actually think that would be enough. So we no longer have all of the scrap and stuff locked by chunk data cards here. It feels very weird to see that scrap has been completely dealt with for now. Where can we get more coal? Is there such a thing as a coal uh, core fragment? I think there is. Pulverizer. Core fragment processing coal. Yes, but we haven't found one yet. Oh, oh, that's an asteroid belt. Um, I remember on, it's not going to be a whole lot, but on Tolibai we were actually, uh, how did you get, how did our burner inserters run out of fuel when they were picking up coal and nothing else? Well, in any case, we had a machine here deliberately to burn coal because back then we were overflowing with coal. Um, it's obviously not the way things are working out right now. Tullaby kind of needs a bit of an overhaul. Or I should just have delivery cannon... Honestly, if all I changed here was to add some... If I put in a um, delivery cannon chest to provide heat shielding just for these delivery cannon capsules, that would make a significant difference. We're actually accumulating vulcanite, which is eventually going to block everything. Uh, same applies for stone. And for the same reason we weren't sending coal back to Nalvis. Um, it's not going to be a huge amount, but... Oh. I lied, we are sending coal back to Nalvis. Okay. Except we're not making enough delivery cannon. Alright, that tears it. Um, let's put in a delivery cannon chest here. And... What are we... We don't have a transmitter on this planet, do we? I hope I have... I hope I left one lying around. It might be a bit of a nuisance to make one. But the reason I'm wondering about that is we need to make sure we don't overflow the delivery cannon chest. We're obviously probably going to have to make one of those as well. Concrete, steel, heat shielding, and radar. I don't think we have any radar because there's a radar that isn't being placed down here. Uh, what else is missing here? Solar panels, don't care. Lights, don't care. Burner inserters don't interact well with red or blue belt. That could have been the problem. Yeah, considering the one at the end isn't suffering. That's probably it. But I think I'm going to get rid of this contraption, or at least stop supplying it for now. Um, because I would like to send that coal back. Uh, all we need to do, probably, maybe, hopefully, all we need to do to get enough delivery cannon capsules to support this entire thing. Um, it's actually sulfur that's the problem for heat shielding. 
Maybe we can do something about that instead. Uh, so sulfur goes all the way back here. And we just have a couple of these machines with no beacon, and we've got a million petroleum. Uh, yeah, I think... I think I found a better solution. Probably. Let's copy-paste a beacon with speed modules. And... We can put that here. On the off chance that we're going to need some... Well, that's not going to make a difference. Yeah, I think just putting that there is going to make a pretty big difference. We do have a beacon and some speed modules, right? I see speed modules. I do not see beacons, but if we have less than seven, we might have some. Uh... It's a lot of different stuff. We've got decider combinators here, so why don't I put one here, and then we're going to connect to the logistic network, and we're going to say beacon greater than zero output beacon input count. Uh, I still can't see the result. Let's put it on this poll. We do not have any beacons. Okay. So let's throw down another lazy bot automation. And... Passive provider goes here. Beacon... Shift right click, shift left click. Is that a green chest? Yeah, it is. Luckily, we've got everything we need. Um, I would also like to make a radar while I'm at it. What was that other thing I needed a radar to make? A delivery cannon chest. Okay. Let's make this a stack inserter. Pressing L to bring up logistic network should work in knapsack mode. Nice. Right, cool. That's a little bit easy. Uh, that's a bit slow, but we only need one for the moment. Change that to radar. Shift right click, shift left click. And we need some iron plate, which we do have. Let's just limit this to radar less than 10. And beacon should already be on its way here. I think I see the culprit. There we go. And now we just need the speed modules to be delivered. Considering we're completely full on all fluids, I don't think we're going to have trouble getting enough sulfur. Uh, then the question is, do we have enough steel? We definitely have enough stone. And considering how iron... We do have an iron... A temporary iron mine that we're extracting from over here. That's going to last quite a while, even without improving this layout. So I don't think we're going to have any trouble with steel for the foreseeable future. Um, I was sending some steel back to Nervous, but... Well, I guess it... Yeah, if we end up accumulating iron from 
ore mining, which we don't here. Uh, it would make more sense to send it back as steel. It's more uh, delivery cannon capsule efficient. But once we have... There we go. Uh, I think... Yeah, we need to upgrade these inserters. But I think that's already, even with just the fast inserters, going to be more than enough sulfur. We only need 7.2 per second. And hopefully that's going to be enough heat shielding to support all of these cannons. I did have it set up to send coal home and use it for plastic as a priority before we burn the rest. But yeah, I'd definitely like to uh, like to see some coal sent back, even if it won't be very much from this planet. All right, there's our sulfur. Apart from the travel time on the belt. It really is taking its sweet time to get there, though. Your bots are moving copper plates in a loop? Really? Where is this happening? That's a uh, copper wire. Bonk. Hey, Christoph King. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, we can swap this to... Delivery cannon chest now. On the off chance that we decide that we need some. Better recipe for observation frames with barrel should help with the coal situation as well. Observation frame. Uh, they both use one coal, but this makes twice as many. Uses beryllium plate and glass. This uses steel and glass, so that saves iron as well. Okay, let's get this... Uh... Let's get this alternate recipe set up already. Um, there's a passive provider chest that picks up copper from a belt. Hold on, let's go back. Passive provider chest that picks up copper from a belt and a request chest which puts copper on that same belt. Copper plate. So here's the requester. And yeah, there it is. Okay. Uh, I don't think we need this one anymore. This was from when we had a bunch of copper plate in storage that we wanted to use. So we can just get rid of that. Good catch. Thank you, Calvin. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright. So, how much work is it going to take to change this. Let me just see the recipe again. Observation frame. It still takes 10 light oil. That's good. It still takes glass. It still takes coal. It's just swapping steel for beryllium plate, and then we get twice as many as an output at the same speed. So we're just swapping steel for beryllium plate. Okay. Which means this belt here needs to change. And we're going to add beryllium plate here. Wait, we didn't... I'm pretty sure we don't already have 
a target for Beryllium Plate. Yeah. No, we definitely didn't do that just yet. Whoops. So this is going to be... Beryllium Plate. I hope we've got an extra cargo landing pad lying around somewhere. Alright, so where was... Where was that belt? Steel. This is going to connect like so. Oh, I should just... Um, I should just do it this way. Check that lines up. Looks good. And splitter goes here. And then we can do this. That should do it. And then we just need to remove all of the steel from this whole mess. Uh, I think we'll just shove it into a chest for now. Let's bring our spiders down. And then we'll have the spiders pick it up with the construction bots. We'll need to add... Uh, I was going to say we need to add a little bit of scaffolding, but we should actually change this belt up a bit since this is the last one. Remove that. Chest goes here. Stack inserter. Actually, stack filter inserter for steel. And we're going to change this recipe to observation frame with beryllium plate. Steel. Okay. Next step is getting the construction spiders to Add and or repl I got him to walk off the edge. That's no good. We need them to add slash change this belt over here. And then if we give them a bunch of short move orders, the bots should question mark keep up with them as they place this belt. They're probably going to have to go back to get more belt to be able to... They probably won't be able to do this in one trip anyway. We do have the cargo landing pad. Fantastic. So this is Beryllium Plate. Novus Orbit. Beryllium Plate. Did I spell that right? B E R Y double L I. Yes. Novice Orbit Phytate Extract. Novice Orbit Brilliant Plate. Fantastic. Now we need a... I can't believe we've actually run out of... Uh, spots to put things in cargo rockets. I guess we're going to need to make another one of these. Um, just thinking about where I want to put it, I guess we'll put it right next to the beryllium plate, since, uh, yeah, we'll use this block here, since we're going to be putting beryllium and maybe aeroframe poles uh, into it. 
Okay. So let's start by... I really should have blueprinted this. Maybe I did blueprint it. But I think there's a little update or something, a little update or two to this that I wouldn't have remembered to update in the blueprint. So let's start by copying this. And immediately get rid of the information on the constant combinators for the requesting stations. Except those ones, those are fine. Oops, that's fine. Okay, now let's bring our construction spiders in range. New launch place, yes indeed. So this is going to be twice as efficient coal-wise, and it's not going to require any iron, or at least that part of um, the science. Do we need iron at all here? Probably. Definitely, actually. Alright. Steel chest is empty. Did the spiders build? Not as effectively as I hoped. That's unfortunate. Okay. Let's bring them a bit closer to their precious little butts. They do still have some belt left over. Uh, is quite. Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Also, Majagus. Don't think I said already. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Also, good to see you again. Quite a bit of belt to place here still, unfortunately. Um, but I think it's going to take a little while before we've got a... What's the shortest path here for the beryllium plate? It'll be picked up from here, go back this way, straight onto the roundabout, and here. Is that better? Oh, it is going a bit into the red. Why is that? I did just turn it down. Maybe I'd better change it directly in... Mix it up. Halve it? Okay. I actually did halve it yesterday, and I just halved it again, but I don't... I, I suspect that isn't working the way I thought it was. Wait, let me test it right here. I'm going to mute this. And then... Nothing. So, if I put this down to here... I'll put it on, like, 1%. That is, that's on 1% now. I think I need to change the volume sliders in, mix it up itself, but this will be okay for now. Let's pull that.
Does that seem good? I need some cargo rocket silos, which we don't normally carry. Uh, seems like the spiders have dropped everything else, though. Uh, we've also already got our rocket fuel. Fantastic. Oh, and I needed to set this to... Pavilion Plate. Um, I believe it stacks to 200, yes. So... Let's make it two train loads. Uh, let's change the name of the station before the train gets here. Early in plate requester. And then Rillium plate. Did you finish the space rail? Um, I did copy the space rail, uh, the rail block that we have here uh, into space, if that's what you mean. And it's got a minimal amount of scaffolding, at least at first, just so the spiders can get around. Okay. I was also trying to figure out the layout whereby we could have like four small Pro uh, production areas in one place, and we'll have a small train pick up the finished products. Um, so maybe something like this. I can't decide if the space... like, these rail blocks might be a bit bigger than necessary. Considering how ridiculously powerful the, um space assembly machines are, but on the other hand, we're going to need a lot of throughput to support them, which means a number of train stations, so maybe that's totally fine as it is. 1% was fine? Really? Okay. Oops. Let me adjust that again. All right. And then we've still got 19 million iron here. Oh, I forgot we took territory for another iron mine. We should probably do something about that before we have to completely clear the biters out here again. I haven't been doing anything with our military spiders on uh, Nalvis for a while. I forgot again that I was going to add that mod that lets you auto-target uh, lots and lots and lots of biter I was going to say biter buildings, the stationary biter stuff. Um, like, you could just draw a box over this and it'll auto-target all of the worms and spawners with artillery. Considering the sheer amount of stuff I need to aim at with artillery, uh, if I want to use it for expansion, might be a good idea. Alright, do a little zigzag. Get some shield back after going halfway through that. And I haven't used the spiders like this for a while, so I would like to check on their health after that. The artillery targeting remote, that mod's quite buggy, really. I've seen Mucky use it a few times and haven't seen any bugs. Also in 7 newer, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well, good to see you again. Happily crashes your game if you look at it even slightly wrong, oh no. Maybe not then. Uh, what are we doing? Resupplying. 
And I need uh, seven. Okay, I don't need core mining drills right now. Thank you. I do need seven cargo rocket silos. And also, I kind of need to go back here. I suspect I can probably fix the core mining drill situation if I go there physically and mess with these. Wait. I thought I just clicked... Maybe I clicked on a different one. I thought I clicked on this and saw a coal mining drill that was working. But apparently not. Considering that I can only deconstruct the core mining drills that are actually there. What I'm scared of here is that... Okay, what I hope will happen if I physically go here is I can pick up the core mining drills that are like not real and then just place them down and everything works again properly uh, but what I'm afraid of is this whole thing is balked and I should be reloading a save but we're gonna lose too much progress if I do that so it's a bit of a conundrum let's head over here I hope we're seeing some we've got everything but uh, space capsules here now. Loading up on that rocket fuel. Fantastic. How is our production of space capsules? It's as ever, it is bottlenecked on rocket control units. I think these days rocket control units are... Oh, processing units. Oh, that's right, I did bump up the priority on batteries and rocket control units, I bumped up the priority for iron because we're having trouble getting iron everywhere, but uh, blue circuits, you say? Plastic, you say? That is not... Oh, plastic traces back to coal, that's going to be the problem. And this is red circuit, red circuit needs plastic. Um, plastic, of course, needs coal. So we really, really need another source of coal to get everything flowing at a decent pace. We do, of course, have infinite coal, it's just not that fast. So... Oh, that's kind of handy as well. We stop shooting if this is empty. I haven't seen the uh, item destruction area idle pretty much ever, unless it was broken somehow. This is almost spooky. Now, places we can get... Oh, there's actually 4.4 million over here. We now have 5 million over here. We now have three very big reasons uh, to take this territory. So I think that's going to be our goal for the short term. Because everything is bottlenecked on iron and coal at this time. I could probably make another squad of military spiders. That would definitely speed things up a bit here. Uh, uranium is also welcome. But yeah, we need to expand out until we find an appropriate spot to build a wall here. Let's just get that done. I guess I'll use the nav satellite. We'll just go north until we find water.
Is that it? Okay, that's good. And that's more iron. 12 million. Fantastic. Okay. Oh, that's even more iron. You're kidding. Okay, I am feeling very greedy for conquest right now. It is a ton of territory that we have to take, but the incentives are very strong. There's also... I, I also wanted to check... Um, I'm, I'm actually going to mark these as well. Iron ore. Because they can be very hard to find on the map. With the, um... With the modded, uh... Terrain. Coal is over here. Iron ore. And was there any more? There's coal here. I don't think there was more iron that we've spotted. There's lots of stone. We were actually having a stone shortage temporarily before. As weird as that sounds. Okay. Coal goes here. Uh, the other thing I wanted to check though is on all of our little... Um, outposts. Do we have a big chunk of iron or coal that we could send back to Nalvis relatively easily? We do have half a million iron here. I think I already did set this up. Yeah, we're not smelting it with vulcanite blocks because there's no water here, but um, we are sending that back to Nalvis as fast as we reasonably can. Although we are prioritizing the vault light blocks with the uh, delivery cannon capsules that we can make with this one machine. Um, where are our spiders? There they go. How much ammo do they have left? Some of them are a little bit scratched. I'm not too worried yet. They still have lots and lots of ammo. So let's uh, get them to do their thing over here. And then we'll have them back off and repair. If I'd use the navsat, I can spawn an artillery targeting remote, and I no longer have to carry those with me. Or one of them anyway. Most importantly, it's taking up an inventory slot. Uh, it's the wall that we've got the artillery at. It's getting this done. Uh, yeah, I haven't been this motivated to take territory in a while because it's been so hard to find resources on Nalvis. Hello, Dullest Wall. Good, to, uh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. If I recall correctly, there's a mod that changes the transparent squares of an ore patch to black. Makes them a little easier to spot on the map. Sounds good. Uh, I think we will... Use myself and my spider to deal with this. Although we could probably stand to have a bit more shielding by the time we get there. Uh, I might even just... No, I won't continue to run off the batteries. That is literally just for the exoskeleton legs. Uh, so in a minute or two I'll swap it out for uh, portable RTG. Maybe a pair of those and some, like, three adaptive armors. Spiders are still chilling. And 
artillery's done its job. There should be a bunch of fighters heading towards that base. There they are. Uh, but we do have some nice thick walls over here. This one is a little bit messed up. That's fine. Okay. So I think we'll... Hmm. If not for where that iron is exactly, I was going to say I think we'll build a wall here. But obviously it's going to have to start just a little bit further to the north. Depends. I think the biters can cross this bit, so... If we put a wall... Oh, that's not as big as I thought it was, thankfully. Uh, if we put it right about here, that's actually a perfect fit. Oh, there's some coal here as well. Damn it. That ruins my wall plans. Uh, maybe we'll have to stick the wall out a little bit further and just have a corner over here. Actually, it will make it easier to defend, although I haven't actually designed a corner for this iteration of the wall. Um, so that's going to be interesting. I guess we could just stick it out by one unit this way, and then sort of connect them. Uh, where am I now? Got logistic bots taking things off of me. That's going to end up either stuck in this logistic network forever, because I didn't make a trash train system here, Rip. Oh well, that's fine. I saw like one jetpack floating away there. Now then, let's give ourselves some more shielding. And until that's fully charged, I think we'll keep the three legs maybe. It depends on how dire our battery situation ends up being. We obviously can't support the shields and the exoskeletons on just this portable RTG. 300 kilowatts, we need double that for the legs. And double that for... If the shields were constantly charging, we would need two RTGs just to support that. But obviously we're not going to be constantly running, shooting, or taking damage. And we've got quite a bit of battery charge to go through. Also, the lasers are actually coming from me, so that doesn't actually cost that RTG anything. Um, let's do a quick repair. Uh, repair pack. Gotta jump out of the spider for this. There we go. How's our battery looking? That's actually about the same, so let's keep it that way. Now then. Uh, let's do a quick scan over here with the nerve set. And find, unsurprisingly, some more biter nests. Where are our military spiders? There they are. Oh, running into a bunch of biters. They'll be okay. It's really just the giant worms that are particularly dangerous to them. Oh. And I don't think anything is over here. Okay. Pretty sure there's... Yeah, there's definitely repair packs in this network. 
No need to worry about that. Here we have found some more fighters. Run around the edges first. I should probably check my own batteries at this point. It will take a while to train them with just lasers. Okay. My batteries are actually quite full. 84% versus 62%. This one's running out a lot quicker. It's literally just this one worm here. Why is your spider not shooting? Uh, because I haven't set it to. We don't need rockets just yet. If things get a bit scarier, like if, if I'm manually controlling all this stuff, lasers are fine. At least for the scale of spider bases that we're coming up against here. I'm saving the rockets for when I actually need them. If I jump out of the spider, or if I uncheck this box, or check this box, um, and the spider will be shooting rockets. Um, but yeah, let's continue our sweep with the sensors. Make sure we haven't missed any other biter expansions. I don't think there's any over here because that's in artillery range. Here is a little zoom. And... Looks like we've found most of them. Another little base over here that we can probably finish off just by... ...giving move orders and ignoring it. Okay. Space is nothing but worms almost. Oh, that's something I wanted to change as well. Um, I think I was thinking about this before. It would be a good idea perhaps to quest rockets to be sent to these walls. Sadly, rocket turrets are not a thing, at least not with the mod set that we've got. But it would allow the spiders to resupply a lot more quickly. Now, let's send them up here. Clear out that base that we already softened up. And then the resupply. This is working surprisingly well without my extra input. Very well indeed. Okay, where next? Another little base over here. And here. And here. Wetson Clown, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And another little base here as well. I think I will at least request some rockets over here. Uh, so, put it out for where the ammo is. Uh, rocket. 800. That's enough to fill one spider completely, or at least it's ammo slots.
How's our battery charge doing? 40%. Let's put in another portable RPG now. And my battery charge is dropping, but very, very slowly still. Oh, that's a, a little bit more than I can chew. Ouch. 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 I think I got a little bit too used to having all of that speed. Alright, we're gonna have to repair after this. Keep chasing me, please. There we go. And there's that auto rocket launch I was talking about. Fantastic. Let's wait for the shields to recharge, actually. There we go, all the worms. You know what, I could have done this a lot better, this little bit a lot better with just my jetpack. Would have been a better idea. Also, oh, I don't have a jetpack right now. That would also help. It would also help if I had any shielding whatsoever. Ouch, 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 ouch. Oh no, not like this, not like this. That was so much closer than I thought it would be. Yikes. Whew. Something, something overconfidence. Um. So I kind of forgot that I have neither shield nor jetpack um, in my armor. Alright, let's get you off of the spit. Spidertron safe, yes indeed. Uh, these Spidertrons are also still totally safe. Uh, let's get them to tidy up this mess. And then back here for some sweet, sweet rockets. Which our small train is already bringing. Good timing. Alright, let's uh, finish repairs. Whoops. That was my old uh, muscle memory telling me that 5 is repair pack. Okay. Back to cleaning out the small bases. And... How about some more artillery? That is a lot we can do with artillery here. A lot, a lot. I feel like just sort of click spamming it almost, except it makes the screen drag. This will be enough to soften it up for the spiders. Yeah, we're way... As much as I'm desperate for a couple of types of resource, we're way past the point of... worrying too much about getting value from each artillery shell. Even I can admit that now. Ultimately, the primary resource is time. And we can get things going at a faster pace sooner if we apply artillery shells liberally. Let's be careful here. 
Looks like it's not enough to break shields. It's just enough to break shields. And we have some friends coming over. Not a whole lot, but I think we ran past a base or two that I didn't know was there. Alright, did our spiders get their rockets? Some of them are. Oh, careful. Careful, careful. Go, 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 go. Alright, let's recharge and repair. Not that we need a whole lot of repairing. Okay, that ore does seem very quiet to me. What do you guys think? Here's Mike. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I don't know about you, but I was barely able to hear that. Let's bump up the volume just a little bit. And I'll throw another one out, just so we can hear it. Seems like these things expand the same rate you clean them up. I think it's more that we missed a base or two. Uh, El... Alan? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. We're getting hit a lot more by spit, by not having more legs. Um, yeah, I think it's, these bases are getting a bit thicker, uh, to the point where I would like to send the spider army in to deal with those. Especially since my personal Spider-Tron and power armor is getting a little bit low on, uh... On power. Something was just occurring to me that I, I noticed this. Um, let me throw down this building now. I haven't actually built this yet, but I designed it off stream. So we've got one, two, and n number of assembly machines uh, for this build. And what it does is reads the logistic network and compares it to a bunch of a list of stuff that we want in the robo network. Uh, and it sets recipes automatically. I think we need to automate recipe combinators though. Ironically, if we had one here, we could get that done by changing a signal there. I think we've got one lying around for testing purposes somewhere. Here it is. Recipe Combinator. Because the tricky thing about this is it doesn't show the output signals on the right, but if you point it... So I didn't think it was working, but if you point it at, uh, for example, a power pole, or pass its input signals through to something else, you can see it there. But if we delete this, it's going to be placed down, hopefully here, maybe here, and if that happens, we'll be able to just request that some recipe combinators get built. Am I somewhere safe? Yeah, we're good. Got a bunch of biters coming in though. Nothing too scary. That's a little bit scary. Uh, why don't I get my spider to contribute some rockets? 
And I think we're a little late for that. Flamethrower turrets go. We can get in front of this group though. Move back a little bit so you're not the primary target. Actually, why don't you play decoy? There we go. Fantastic. Okay. Military spiders are still doing fine. Fantastic. It'll blow up your own walls. Uh, what will blow up my own walls? Let's... Yes, good, perfect. So we are automatically going to be making... How is there no steel in the robo-network? That is... Very... Very cons... Oh. Oh, I remember. Hey, what? We've got no substations? I guess they require steel? How about this? Do we have some medium poles? This is getting a little bit alarming. Medium poles. Should be up here somewhere. Uh... I think. There they are, medium poles. Okay, we do in fact have no substations, because we have no steel, but we have medium poles, so this is now powered, therefore steel is coming back in. I remember I fixed this, but something weird happened, like a bug or something, and I loaded a save, uh, so that was never actually fixed. But yeah, we will be getting some steel into the Robo Network now. And the main bus. What are you training in there? Uh, what do you mean by training? Uh, fly by dancing. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, military spiders, could you please pay this base a visit? And this one, and this one, and I'll check on you after that, I think. Thank you for the follow, fly by dancing. It was steel. Okay, no worries. Oh, you're bringing in by train. I see what you mean. Okay, cool. This is maybe a little bit sketchy, having the spiders do all that, like, pre-programmed. So I want to check on them first. Once I see that they're going to be safe, um, I want to look back at that uh, auto-crafting setup. Looks like this is actually pretty good. As long as they're not getting hit by many worms all at once, they'll actually recharge the shield before anything bad happens. Alright, cool. So, our auto crafter is currently trying to make steel chests, to my surprise, because there's no steel in the robo network. So, how this works, I, w I, was, I thought there would be, like, all of this stuff would already be made, and we would move directly to crafting the recipe combinator to fill this out. But yeah, all of these, we get what's in the robo network, we multiply that by negative one, so we've got the negative of everything in the robo network. The, uh, it, that implicitly gets added to the positive of how much we want of all of these things. And then uh, each signal greater than zero we pass through here, and then we use anything greater than zero to isolate just one signal. 
uh, and then we do the same thing over here. So, wait, what? Oh, I see what we're doing here. Um, so the chain for these looks a little bit different if you have an unlimited number going out this way. But all we need for, to do for just two of these is we take all of this stuff, anything greater than zero output, anything input count, takes just one of those signals, then we multiply that signal by negative one and pass it to another one of these. So this has the 50 steel chests, this has the negative 50 steel chests, and then we're getting all of those other signals from here. So this one wants to craft uh, substations, except we don't have this recipe combinator here yet. Now, um, most of our steel chests are going to get made here with the old system first. Um, but that's okay. More importantly, by the time this thing is done, with just a couple of assembly machines, or even just one assembly machine, we can automate all of these things that overall get built. Uh, the demand for them is very slow. And we could go ahead and do the same thing for uh, delivery cannons, delivery cannon chests, delivery cannon capsules, maybe, I don't think so. Uh, weapon delivery cannon. Uh, this, is, this system here is ideal for making anything where the assemblers dedicated to building those sit idle most of the time, individually. Oh, now, how is our military front looking? Very, very good, actually. I mean, the spiders are completely unharmed. They are a bit low on rockets by now, of course. So we'll have them go back for more relatively soon. And just soften all of this up for the spiders. I guess if I was just softening them up, I would kill the worms more than the spawners, but the spawners are the real prize anyway. Make an automatic setup for those new combinators? Um, I did, yeah. That's included in that system. Uh, the only trouble is we're going to have to wait a while before it gets around to making the recipe combinator. Currently it's on substations. So not too many of these things are going to need to be crafted. A lot of them are already going to be crafted by all of this stuff we have here anyway. But sooner or later... Um, actually, currently it's trying to make... Ironically... Wait, maybe I can do this. Remove this one. Because this one currently wants to make the recipe combinators. Now we put that back. Uh... Maybe I should have waited a few more seconds, but I'm hoping the bots will place this. And then we'll make a few uh, recipe combinators, or just one is enough, actually. I wish you could see if it is on its way. The thing is, if these recipes change before that happens, then it was all for nothing. Where is our recipe combinator? Where did it go? Um... Well... Uh, 
I think it might take a minute or two before one of these gets placed. But it shouldn't though, because as much as there's a lot of logistic bot uh, jobs happening at the moment, it should just be... like construction bots are on a separate channel basically. So it really shouldn't be taking any time. Oh, here it comes. Now which one is it going to be? Perfect. Now it's going to make uh, recipe combinators. As long as the recipe that we're aiming for doesn't change before we get one of these, uh, this is going to be... Uh, this is going to be get done. Also, I did set these recipe combinators to multiply the results by the input count. So it's currently requesting enough copper cable and electronic circuits to finish 50 of these. And there it goes. Fantastic. Now we can do both of these at once. Still waiting on some steel. I thought we were putting steel... We are putting steel into the network. Just not anywhere near as fast as the demand. Can we prioritize the right side? We should do that anyway to belt balance it if it's not backed up. That'll speed things up a bit. Anyway, that is all done and working. Fantastic. We're still finding spider expansions out this way that we thought we'd cleared. Oh my goodness. I thought I scanned this area. Maybe the expansions are coming from the bigger bases as well. Uh, can we hit that with artillery? We can. One, two, three, four, five, six. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Good. Question, because I'm new here, have you gone to space yet? Yes, yes I have. Uh, here is our orbital base for now. This is the old sushi base. This is the first sushi base. Not very high throughput, but when you have no idea what all of these complicated uh, production chains are going to look like. It's not a bad idea. Uh, we're still using it to make flat solar panels. And here we have a... I, I regret making it this big, honestly, but here we have a main bus base with all of the uh, Tier 1 space sciences. Uh fed by rocket launchers from Nalvis. Uh, our next thing that we're upgrading to is rail blocks for everything, which is going to be a lot easier to deal with all of the inputs and outputs and the way they all chain together. Not that far at all. Not yet. Rail blocks? Yeah, so... Uh... This is my current iteration on how I do my rail system. Uh, basically, it's left-hand drive on all of the straight rail, but then it's got these crisscross things everywhere going into roundabouts, and on roundabouts you're allowed to drive clockwise or counterclockwise. And what that allows us to do is to very easily have uh, rail coming in and out. We've got double-headed trains, uh, they can go both ways. So to fit the first station here, all we need is to take a little bit of rail directly off this roundabout, put a station here, and that's, that's actually all of the space that needs to be taken up for the train stop. 
And if you combine that with LTN and some circuitry tricks, uh, our Omni Smelter here is a pretty good example. We've got one, two, three, four, uh, five, six input stations, and one, two, three, four, five output stations across uh, six actual train stops and in a relatively very limited space. Logistic train network, correct. Uh, so it allows you to set uh, requests for items and at pick up stations you just tell LTN what you've got available. Uh, you can set specific thresholds for how much stuff has to be available before they will pick up or drop off items. Is that a mod? Yes it is. And I overall uh, strongly recommend it. However, it does have a learning curve and I really recommend uh, taking a careful look at the default settings and changing them. Because you will run into problems that are especially like as a new player to LTN, they're basically not your fault. Um, you, you'll get the trains doing some strange things, which if you look at the settings and change them, uh, like that's going to make complete sense. Um, I Even if you do change all of those settings, I strongly recommend not setting your requests so that you would completely fill up or even come close to filling up uh, the chests at the drop-off stations, because I have had LTN uh, basically drop off more stuff than it's supposed to. So definitely leave plenty of room at the drop-off stations. That would slow the delivery down. Uh, what would... It's a bit of a hassle to set up your first few iterations of loading and pickup stations. After that, it's very nice. Yeah. Hey, the nuke guy. Good to see you again. You're welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay. Um, whoops, that's my spider. Where is my spider? Here it is. I think we've cleared out no, I hope we've cleared out all the little biter expansions in this area now. Oh, never mind. That's not an expansion. That's fine. We can ignore that. They're just going to run into the wall. Yeah, I think we're okay here for now. I see we are learning about LTN. Yes, indeed. I did spend a great deal of time coming up with various uh, various systems for like using vanilla trains only uh, came up with various systems for like prioritizing stations and stuff like that um, and uh, people will tell you I am pretty good with circuits I, I don't recommend trying like there's at least, and unless there's been an update with some things that I'm not aware of, um, I would say that vanilla trains are basically kind of incomplete if you want a really good rail system. Um, it's unfortunate, but that's where it is for now. Let me check how many rockets they've got left after this. In fact, let me just send them back for repair and resupply um, after they do all that. Okay. And while we're at it, why don't I go and resupply? Who knows, maybe they'll add new train stuff with the work in progress DLC. I hope so. There's actually just a very few things that I've wanted added to uh, Vanilla Trains for a long time. 
it would make a very big difference to what you're capable of, how sophisticated your automated train system could be. Uh, for instance, if you could have them conditionally skip a train stop, um, that would be very useful. And I don't mean by, like, disabling that particular train stop, because that's not so good when you scale up. If I could only pick one mod to put into vanilla, it would be LTN. Maybe in the expansion. Fair enough. Uh, is this a bit too dangerous? No, I think they're going to be okay. They might take some scratch damage. Uh, if that... Yeah, they're going to be fine. If they have enough rockets. Uh, I believe they have enough rockets. Some of them are relatively low. The one at the front is empty. But no, they should be fine. Okay. Now then. We're still making substations. We're still stuck on steel. Uh, but it looks like we only need, like, one more? No, 65 more substations. Oh, I need to update this blueprint because this one does not multiply the requests by... Uh, how many things we're trying to craft here. Alright, so let's go... Crafting combinators to buy... And select new contents. Fantastic. Bonk. That bonk sounds extremely quiet to me, but I've been told it's actually a decent volume now. If it's possible to have a disparity between volume settings. Volume is fine? Okay. Yeah, when I look at the uh, the desktop audio audio display, um, the volume for that looks fine, but the way I hear it is just very, very quiet. Which doesn't bother me as long as I'm aware of it little quiet, just the applause thing is super loud. It is, let's try. Yeah, see, that sounds really quiet to me, but, um, like, that was, the applause was just at the top of the green zone. Not now that it's all like 1%. Okay. Yeah, I could get a bit more granular with adjusting the volume of all of those things individually. Uh, it's just a lot quicker if I change the volume of, uh, what is it called? Mix it up soundboard thing. Bunk could certainly use a boost compared to other sounds. Okay. I guess I can try... to figure out all over again. Let's real quick. Smart action groups. Wait, is it action groups? No. Events? Nope. Commands. It's not commands. I thought I put it under a thing called sounds, but I don't see anything like that. Channel. No. Is it under chat? It is not under chat. Where are our spiders? I'm a little bit worried. They are totally fine. Uh, 
Oh, channel points. Here we go. Found it, finally. Okay, so bonk, edit command, sound. Uh, how do I get to the sound settings? There it is. So it's at like 50%, 45. What if I put it up to 75 and mix it up? Let's try... Where is Bonk? That's nope. How's that? I don't mind the sounds. Boosting all sounds doesn't seem a problem. IMO, they're all slightly soft compared to your voice. Louder? Okay. Is that louder just for bunk or louder for everything? Just for bunk. Right then. Uh. lost track of how to... here we go. Oh, I didn't apply it, I think. It's still in like 44%. How do I save what I've done here? There we go. Alright, let's try this again. How's that? That was like 75%, so nice. Okay, cool. Any other suggestions? Alright, I'm going to run through the other sounds and let me know how it goes. Uh, follow alert is under a different thing, so that'll have to... I'll have to do that a bit later. So what do you guys think? Should any of those go up or down? Clap slightly lower. Okay. Pause. Edit. And how about... It was on 100. How about 80% or 75? Save. The rest are fine. Thank you for the follow, Daddy Rat. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, I'm not even sure where I need to go at this point to change the volume of uh, the alert box stuff. Maybe properties here. No. I might have to go into the Browse of stuff for that. Okay. How are we doing in Factorio? Uh, these guys are all still pretty under-equipped. Should probably put them closer to the storage where the rockets are. But yeah, I don't think it's enough request just 800 rockets. How about 8,000? And for now I'll just get them to go back to the mall to get resupplied. Your electricity seems to be a bit low. Uh, I don't... I don't think so. Where did you see this electricity problem? Was it over here? Yeah, apart from the flashing that we get from these lamps under these conditions, this is actually all completely intentional. Um, so what we've got here is... Oh. No, that's fine. We can just remove that one. Uh, what we've got here is 
most of these lasers don't have power most of the time. Uh, the only reason they're not flashing is because of how this substation is touching these two solar panels. For some reason, that doesn't cause any problems with these two solar panels providing all of the power for these two lasers here. And what happens is these lasers are basically switched off most of the time. These two uh, start shooting when some biters show up. We can't detect biters directly, but we can detect when ammo is consumed or when, for example, an accumulator charge drops. And then we've got a latch circuit over here that says um, if we drop below 20%, connect this power switch, and then don't disconnect it until we're back to 100% charge. So once these lasers start shooting, uh, accumulator charge drops below the amount that it gets to naturally during the night. As soon as that happens, power switches connect, and the neighbors get power from the main grid as well. So that way we can have way, 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 way more laser turrets than we otherwise would. Um, and they're not all consuming 24 kilowatts each constantly, which does add up to a lot. Your production is exactly equal to consumption for the main network. Um, I just want to check something, actually. We are turning the core mining drills on and off, so... It would probably do to remove some of these. I think we would get more... I want to try this as an experiment. Um, we do have power management for the core mining drills, but just having them placed there, even if they know, even if I put one out here in the middle of nowhere, um, it will slow down all of these other core mining drills. Uh, we do have power management so that we basically only use excess power to get core fragments. But we're definitely beyond the sweet spot here, considering the amount of power we're producing. And we can tell that's the case because... Um, because our power consumption for the core mining drills... It's only happening at night, actually. The core mining drills switch on and off. Maybe this is already as good as it gets. I was going to remove some core mining drills and then compare after a while um, the production rate of regular core fragments. Um, but I think because we added more nuclear power, this is only switching on and off at, the, at night, so... This is actually already pretty good. Um, if we eventually see some saturation of uranium uh, with all of our... Oh, that's not looking as good. Yeah, we did secure a bunch more uranium coming in. What's happened here? Um, I'm a little bit concerned. Why have we stopped... Why have we stopped sending uranium core fragments from that planet? Anyway, I was hoping to get enough... There's no copper. Why on earth is there no copper? We've got... Billions of copper back on Nalvis. Is it this one? This goes to Fornax. That's not the one I'm looking for. Lothar. Okay. You are lacking explosives. We don't have enough explosives to support our delivery cannons. 
that go to other planets from Nalvis. Um, that's a worry. Explosives require coal. Everything keeps coming back to coal lately. So we really need to take some territory and mine this stuff. 5 million here, 4.4 million here. More important is the throughput that we can get from it. Um, I'm almost... I'm actually getting very tempted to try mining this before we can even finish our walls over here. But I think that would be a terrible idea. Idea. So let's just continue taking territory first. We do have a little bit of coal here, not that great. Uh, there's a coal mine here that's quite small. We could probably take this one relatively... Oh, there's 21 million iron here as well. Wow. Okay. All right. This is what we're doing first. We're going to get a wall probably going up this way and connecting over here. Because that is by far the least territory that we need to take to secure the most throughput of iron and coal right now. Um... In fact, let's bring our military spiders up this way. Let's grab our artillery over here. And make sure... This is already... We're already looking pretty good with the auto artillery range that we could start building these walls. Um... We'll just take a bit more territory, just to be safe. That's going to soften it up more than enough for the spiders. And over here as well. Fantastic. And let's get our construction spiders. Actually, I think I removed all of the requests for military things from them. Why are they carrying batteries? And rocket fuel. And cogs. I think I didn't put enough effort yet into limiting all of those items. Uh, batteries go here. And then... What else are you carrying that you shouldn't be? Rocket fuel? Of the solid variety? It goes under LDS. Okay, and let's... Return um, some requests for walls and stuff, lasers, flamethrower turrets, uh, gates, gun turrets. We'll let the artillery get delivered automatically later on. Now, copy this one, change that back to yellow. Copy to all of these. And then, once they are resupplied, I'll have them go up here to build the next expansion of the wall. And then we can get that sweet, sweet coal. I'm running 12 core drills, and, I'm, and I already get one point one for blue belts. 
Uh, yep, max rate from these is... It's only 144 per second, actually. So it's a bit more than three blue belts. Diminishing returns hit pretty hard. But yeah, before we followed that chain of stuff that was missing, I was really hoping to see that we had a lot more uranium fuel cells. Um, a lot more uranium coming in. So that we could support the core mining to go 24-7 with 64 drills. And that would, Im uh, that would mean that we're getting significantly more coal. But unfortunately, it's not looking that good at the moment. We really desperately need to get coal going at a faster rate. That means taking all of this territory, uh, but taking this territory right here is a lot quicker and easier. And we get a really big iron mine out of it and a decent sized coal mine. Alright, let's head back to the old base. And then... And then what? We very nearly lost a laser turret here. Where's its health? Four. It's on four health out of a thousand. Wow. Okay. Military spiders are still only halfway to the destination. Uh, let's do a little more artillery then. Actually, considering the amount of territory we need to take, this is almost already overkill. But who cares? Four worms in one shot, perhaps? Why not? Okay. Oh, that's a uh, that's another giant coal mine. In fact, that's much better than this one. So I guess we'll be playing uh I nearly said hopscotch. Leapfrog is what I'm trying to say. We're going to be playing artillery wall leapfrog here. In order to take that call. We do have an obscene amount of artillery shells uh, stored up, I'm pretty sure. Let's see. Yeah, we've got more than... Okay, 400 plus 48 times 48. And then multiply that by 2. 2700. We've got like at least 5400 artillery shells, so I don't think we need to worry about those running out while our production of certain basic resources is not good. Um, let's move the spiders in for cleanup. And over here as well, please. And what should I be doing right now? Let's have a look again at our auto crafter. It's still doing substations and nothing else actually. 
the only thing we're still trying to make is substations. Fair enough. And, uh, once we're not requesting anything here, we have the same set, at, at, at the same signal here that we're using to set requests on this requester chest, we have those exact same signals as a blacklist set filters for this, uh, filter inserter that's going to shove everything back into the active provider chests. Um, if the recipe that we're making requires more than five inputs, it will unfortunately start taking one of the inputs out. But I set it to a stack size of one, so it's only going to very slowly drain what's in here. And that's just to make sure that we never end up with a completely full requester chest here that uh, uh, doesn't leave any room for the inputs that we need. Oh, we're now making... Wait, what? We didn't... I never even put a request here for basic batteries. Oh, I know what happened. Um, so sometimes you get a negative signal from read logistic network contents when the bots are going to pick something up. And there's going to be, like, a demand for more of those by the logistic bots than actually exist in the network at this point. Although... I never actually meant for this, uh inserter to be here. I wonder where on earth... Oh, I see. The personal batteries are being moved from here to here. Okay. But yeah, so, so we had like one battery here or something, and a logistic bot came to pick up three at a time, and I think that makes the... Uh, Logistic network report negative personal batteries. And when that happens, uh, at least with the way I've got this set up, we could get, we could fix it with one more combinator that just says, uh, only pass through stuff that's positive from the robo port to start with. But ultimately, I don't think it's going to make enough of a difference here to mess anything up. We're actually using this to make robo uh, robots as well. I'm surprised we don't have 50 in the network. I guess construction bots do get taken from this logistic network to supply the outer walls, so that's not that surprising. It is about time we send our construction spiders, now they're carrying military stuff. Um, up to the new front. And the first thing I'm going to get them to build is just a really simple, small, barely functional version of this wall. Since there's still biters, since the artillery here is triggering biters to attack that wall, I think we'll start up this way. Do I really want to claim that stone mine at the same time? Um... Yeah, kinda. We've got enough stone these days, but who knows when that's gonna change. So let's build our wall starting about here. Make sure it's just barely covering the stone, I think. That'll do it. Alright, so let's start perhaps here. And then... 
Uh, unfortunately, I haven't built a good corner for this system yet. I think this will be okay, though. You might have to add some lasers to the corner here. But this should be a good start. Uh, I need to see how this lines up down here, though. That could be okay. We could add some scaffolding. Not scaffolding. We could add some landfill here. We've got the flamethrower in the end. And the tier 3 wall would look like this. I think we'll landfill the bit that uh, all of these lasers would be on. And have those permanently powered at the end. So yeah, I think I am okay with this particular layout for the walls here. Just joined, and WTF am I looking at? Uh, we are expanding our walls because we definitely... Uh, desperately need more iron and especially more coal. For a second I thought I found even more coal up here, but that's not it. Uh, uniquely K, welcome, welcome. Might be doing well. I should probably head up there myself as well. Just in case. Uh, where did I put my military spiders? Okay, they are still alive. That's good. Excellent. I think I'll park them... I was going to say I'll park them here to help with any of the spiders that come this way, but I don't actually want them spending their rockets. I want to save that for when we're attacking the biter bases. There's another iron patch up right from there. Oh my god, there is two. That's huge. Wow. Uh, do I want... Hmm. We've already got artillery range over it. Okay, I think we have to. I think we have to take that, actually. So, just gonna undo all of these walls we just placed, if we have enough undo levels. Which we do. All of those trees are still marked with deconstruction. Should have just done it this way to start with. Okay. Deconstruct. Do not deconstruct. And then... That looks fine. Okay. We'll use the nav set to explore out this way a bit. Is that more coal? No, it's not. That is... A lot of not water out this way. Okay, let's have a look here. I think our artillery sh range reaches all of that. Fantastic. And I guess we will start a wall here. There's even more coal. I keep... okay, so we were trying to expand out this way to get iron and coal and iron and coal and iron and coal. But it's a lot of territory to take. Um, so we decided for now to just grab these two because it's so easy. But then... Oh, there's some more iron. Oh, there's some more coal. And they're huge. But it's really relatively little effort to grab this extra territory. Except we have to go far enough out that I'm now wondering if we should push out on this other front as well. Water here is good. 
It looks like it stops there. So... Oops, didn't mean to do that. Let's see. It's an off... Oh, that's water. Yes. That's what I want to see. Okay. Um... The trouble is... We're now back to trying to take a really ambitious amount of territory. But the rewards are so good. Huge coal here. Very big coal here. Big coal here. Huge iron here. And huge iron here. And we can... We can just do a couple of really long straight walls that go from water to water to get it done. On the plus side, almost all of this is in range of our artillery turrets. And we have literally 7,000 shells lying around. So let's get started, shall we? Oh, we can see this even better now, except I find the view from the map a bit easier to estimate uh, how many spawners I can kill with one shell. And let's head over here. Fantastic. Fighters are going to be very upset in a moment. Our UPS might drop a bit. You should use more shells? Yeah, that's true. I didn't realize just how many shells we had in storage until I went and looked. That was actually like an order of magnitude more shells than I thought I would have stored up. So... We should probably use them. Especially since the more we use them right now, uh, the sooner we get a boosted flow rate of our two slowest, re uh, slowest main resources. There is all your explosives you're missing? No, we haven't been consistently using a lot of shells. Um, We've got them automatically defending the walls, but um, the reason we don't have explosives right now is because we don't have coal. The shells, like literally 7,000 of them, were stored up before we ever had any problems with coal. In fact, for a while back there, our storage for coal was completely full and we were destroying coal because we had too much of that relative to other resources because we couldn't uh, get those extra resources with core mining if we're full on one of them. Yeah, we've actually gone from iron to copper to coal. We've even had a shortage of stone at one point compared to everything else. Well, not just compared to, like, literally, there was no stone in storage. We weren't able to make concrete at a decent pace because there just wasn't any. How high are we going to go? I think all the way up here. So, let's continue. We're still at exactly 38%. Oh, that's right. We never fixed the uh, orbital base. Let's give the artillery a break for just a moment. Uh, we need to finish all of these belts.
And we haven't actually got a rocket launch of beryllium plate yet. I'm not terribly surprised by that. We should probably have a radar here so that we can see all the time. I'm surprised I didn't have that as part of this blueprint, but I guess there were more radars nearby. So let's put the radar right about here. Revillian plate goes here. Uh, I'm very curious as to why... Don't tell me there's a problem on this planet. There's no space capsules here. Probably because we're still asking for too many. Uh, I thought by the time... Um, I thought by the time we'd run out of space capsules at the other end, we would have um, better throughput of these, and we're not loading anything else because of that. Okay. Let's drop down our... I'll put this here just to save it. Let's drop our amount of space capsules that we're requesting. And don't request any until we completely run out of them, I guess. So that should... Huh? Wait, what? Why did we... S what? I think I messed up. No? We're still requesting space capsule here, so why did we dump them out of the rocket? That's very odd. I probably temporarily gave it the wrong number or something. Okay, so once that gets done, probably we're not going to have enough uranium fuel cells to fill up the requested amount either. But barring that... We'll send some supplies here, and that will include a space capsule, and then we'll send back um, 50,000 core fragments of beryllium. It seems like every launch we are dropping some broken stuff down here. So let's expand the robo-network a bit. Okay, back to Nalvis. Here comes another attack wave. Uh, some more... Wait, what? Why am I carrying 146 delivery cannon capsules? Huh? Delivery cannon... I don't have a request or anything. Oh. Yeah, I think I just don't have a request for these. That should be zero. Except I don't want the bots taking those from me here because I don't think I don't think I included a trash train system up here to get rid of stuff that's not supposed to be in this robo-network. I'll fix that up next time, but I don't want to bother with it here since we're about to move this wall forward. Okay. Uh, let's continue with the shelling. And that is a huge biter base. Wow. Just gigantic. It's like three or four biter bases just all sprawled together. The 
the shelling shall continue until Bida morale improves. Yes. Absolutely. The shelling will definitely continue until my morale improves. Until we finally get that sweet, sweet coal that everything is bottlenecked on at the moment. Uh, it will be a temporary fix until we can... I would really like to find a planet with core... Uh, with coal core fragments. But I don't know if it's going to be enough. Like, with uranium, it's nowhere near enough. I think we get more coal from those core fragments than... Vice versa with uranium, though. Okay. So many nests. nest is looking a bit sad. Fantastic. We're gonna have to wait for the biters to finish countering, uh, counter-attacking. Um, well, I mean the spiders don't have too much trouble with biters themselves, but they can only carry so many rockets on one trip. Unfortunately, I don't think you can fill their inventories with rockets and have those rockets get consumed by the turrets. Alright, so what else did I want to check on while that's happening? Uh... I want to check on this rocket. We're still trying to... We're still trying to load uranium ammo. I mean uranium fuel cells. Which we don't have a whole lot of. Because... Uranium is still looking a bit sad. We did just get a train load of uranium here relatively recently. But... Still nowhere near good enough. It's actually not enough 238. I think we have a bunch of 238 in storage over here. We do. I think it's about time I set up something in... Why are there multiple chests with Spidertrons here? That seems a little bit strange. We did limit our Spidertrons. Did we not? Yeah. I think limiting it to less than 40 was after something like that happened. This is definitely an example of another thing that we could add to just the auto crafter. Umbrella. And the giant media defense installations as well. Let's limit those to 20. We could probably do some point defenses as well. And we're doing space capsules here. I didn't realize that. What? Wait, what? I think... 
it might be worth adding that combinator that I talked about earlier. Since that just got set to try to make space capsules for a surprisingly long time. Okay. But why are we not trying to make... Oh, we've already got those in the network, that's why. Um, we can remove these now. I guess we can do the same for ammo. Meter defense, point defense. Say 100 ammo of each type. More importantly, are we ready to load something else? Yeah, uranium, I forgot. Um, I might just temporarily disable the request for uranium here. So now we're going to load cargo rocket sections, which we've got a lot of available, and 1.6k media defense ammo. Which I'm pretty sure we've got a bunch of lying around. Oh, that will get our barrel core fragments flowing again. Right then. We're still waiting for the biters to come in here. Let's continue shelling. It's going to upset some biters. We're actually getting relatively close to being able to build this wall up here. Uh, maybe while that's happening, I can send the military spiders back around this way. And we can start attacking the biter nests that are just out of range of the artillery. Once they get there. Since they keep attacking this wall as opposed to this one. That is such a gigantic nest. Let's check on our rocket. We're just loading up ammo. I actually don't have any left in storage. Uh, although we've already loaded nearly a thousand. On the way 28. On the way 17. That's not that far off filling up naturally. I wonder if it wouldn't take too many combinators to add some logic so that we could double up on things that we still need a certain number of. I think it would. We could probably just 
copy this whole thing again. That would work. Uh, this robot. Okay, we don't need that one. That's fine. And this one as well. Let's have another one of these here. We do have a lot. Oh. We can't fit green circuits here right now because of the requests that were here before. Maybe I shouldn't limit the stack size to one for this. Or at least temporarily. Wait, why is. Th oh, never mind. No, set filters blacklist. Why is this empty? Uh, why is the logistic request here empty? We're trying to make media defense installation ammo. Apparently that is just... Oh, there it is. That's weird. It wasn't setting logistic requests or anything for a minute there. Glad I landed in your channel. Thank you. I wish you were always streaming while I work. Could watch this all day. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, where are our military? They've still got quite a ways to go. Let's continue making sure that the t by the time they get there, the stream of biters will be headed somewhere else. Although they could definitely handle what's left of this base pretty easily, but more importantly, I want them to deal with what's outside of the range of the artillery shells. So many spawners. Many, many, many spawners. But we're getting there. Kind of hard to see what's what over the stone. we haven't looked at for a minute so we know we're not sending the shells to the same targets but 
It's quite a lot of shells flying. Fantastic. I don't think we're in danger of overwhelming the wall with biter attacks. It is a very strong wall design. It's uh it's actually built Well no, I almost told a half truth there. It is based on a design that was built to uh, to stand up to the rampant mod, which has some very scary biters, including nuke biters. This one's a little bit different. But it's definitely enough to handle an indefinite number of vanilla biters. Alright, let's check on our rocket. We're still loading ammo. How much ammo are we looking for? 300. That might take a minute. We've got two machines making it now. Oh, how long is this going to take? 0.65 per second. is 461 seconds, is seven and a half minutes. Uh, I guess that's not too bad. And what are we still requesting here? Just those three. So it's only the ammo that we're waiting on here. Unless we could maybe have a few more... Space capsules. Pretty please. We have no rocket control units. Wait, what? Oh, we have no rocket control units in the logistic network, but we do have them here. It's actually regular solar panels that we've run out of in the old main bus base. There's no glass. Oh, I forgot again. We were supposed to bring in glass consistently from the logistic network. Let's sort that out now, shall we? We'll start with this, just so we know where the chests are supposed to go. And... Let's do... We only need, like, one or two belts of glass, right? This is where we used to make it. It goes in here. Just 30 per second should be enough to saturate everything. Uh, so... Let's do... This unloader. So, filter inserters here. Add some substation. We need a instant combinator to tell LTN what to send. We'll call this glass requester. And then these are all glass filters. I think we'll get 30 per second out of the yellow inserters. We'll see. Um, plus two train loads. Connect to LTN train stop input, which is already connected to how much we've actually got in these chests. So it'll be that positive number versus this negative number. And LTN will try to bring that number closer to zero. 
Now I just need to belt spaghetti some... How about we just do it like this? That's actually pretty good. already got a glass train on the way. Um, and then it's not okay to exit in this direction, I don't think. So we should probably... allow our train to exit this way. And I don't think we need to add any more signaling if it's going to be like that. Cool. Why is this thing not powered? Not that it needs to be right now, but still. Okay. Does our train have a path? It does. Fantastic. 16k glass coming in hot to the main bus base. And then we can finally start um, uh, making space capsules a lot more consistently here. Should probably add copious storage for the rocket control units here as well, because our consumption of them tends to be very bursty. Yay, indeed. I thought our train would be here just about now, but apparently there's a little bit of traffic. Although, I don't understand why it's not moving forward yet. It should be able to move into this block right now. And wait here if there's something blocking it here and so on. Is there some signal missing here or something? This train wants to go this way. Which doesn't intersect with any of the sectors that this train wants to go through. So I don't understand. Okay, that's just rude. One signal in a circle is flashing. Oh, so it is. It seems we are missing these two signals. Which... Would explain a thing or... T oh my god, there's actually a lot of signals missing here. That explains it. And... I would send the construction spiders... Wait, where are the... Con yeah, no. I would send the construction spiders to deal with that, but I want them ready to build this wall as soon as possible. I think I'll send myself to fix that one. Looks like we can actually get there by going in a straight line. Fantastic. Military spiders, do your thing, please. And clean up all of this stuff. 
and get ready to attack this base soon. Let's line up a few more shells. One, two, three, four, five. I could have done a two for one there. Whoops. Fantastic. Uh, I think I just double shot something, but it's not that big of a deal. Question, how do you group the spiders to one controller? You can press control click to get them to follow something, including another spider. And once you do that, you get them all to follow one spider and then set the remote to be that spider in particular. So they don't technically move as a group. Uh, you can actually see it here. They're all sort of lagging behind this one. Which is more or less of a problem sometimes. Cool, no worries. Now then, am I sitting in my Spidertron? Good. Would have been a bit sad if I'd sent the Spidertron without me. And how's our rocket doing? Still loading ammo. But we don't need much more. Cool. Now then. Why is this one still full? Or over full? Why is it? How did this happen that bots are trying to give batteries and repair packs to our... Um, landfill spiders. Gonna have to sort that out a bit later. We've got lots of things to pay attention to at the moment. What was the other thing I wanted to sort? Oh, that's right, we got glass here, didn't we? Fantastic. And it looks like... Uh, it looks like our yellow inserters are just a bit slow to fill that, but if we're bottlenecking on one red belt just like we used to, it's actually totally fine. So that should be enough to keep the old base satisfied. However, may as well make it one blue belt. Or very close to one blue belt. There'll be little gaps occasionally, but um, if we want it to be truly one blue belt, we can't use this layout. That gets us making rocket control units again. And more importantly, sort of, for now, uh, solar panels. Which allows us to make da, 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 space capsules. Okay then. Just a few more media defense ammo to go. Oh, that's a lot of worms. I'm a little concerned. I think the main thing is to get them all into range as quickly as possible here. That's another problem. Um, if I were ordering them as a group, like you can do with the AAI mod, 
The one at the front getting slowed wouldn't slow down all of them. Hardy the worms, probably more resource efficient. I don't know about that. Um, we already artied like all of the spawners here. Speaking of which. Rockets are a lot more cheap than artillery shells. The only thing is making sure we don't run out of them. Oh, on a per trip basis. But really I want to save the rockets for this area. For the most part. Although we are carrying like... Uh, 20 times 800, 16, uh, 1.6k rockets, I think? No, uh, that's way too little. 10 times that. 16k rockets, I think. Yes, indeed. Also, it takes hardly any rockets to kill the worms. It's really just a matter of getting in range. Thank you, Zuiz. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I'm getting more and more tempted to clear out the entirety of Nalvas of Biters. Um, it's going to take a while, but we should get a few UPS back when we do that. And more to the point, we don't need to worry about uh, keeping the walls supplied or anything like that. It's going to reduce the throughput of uh, resources that we need constantly. Which translates in... Is that a... I would have loved to have kept just that biter alive. I think it was stuck... Oh, I see how it got there. I thought it was stuck on a tiny island. Uh, we've taken some significant damage on the leader. I'd better be a little bit more careful here. Just back off until the shields can recharge, stay at long range, etc. That should do it. As long as it doesn't get hit by worms often. Spiral's actually a really good pattern for this. Just keeps the aggro light enough that the shields can do their thing. It keeps everything in range of rockets. Alright, let's drop some more arty, and we can actually hit some of this one. Let's finish off this base here, more or less. Any other spawners we've missed so far? Honestly, I'm not sure why the artillery shells have more manual range than automatic. 
but we're just about finished here now. It's all clean up from this point. Actually, how many rockets do they have? Some of them are a bit low. Actually, no, the main group has a lot. Because the auto range is huge, would be OP if auto target that far out. Is it really any less powerful if I just have to click on things, though? Yes? Okay. <laughs> Straight down the middle. Have you researched target range? Yes, we've gone as far as we can, I'm pretty sure, with our current... Uh, we need material science pack 2 for the next one of these. We might still be able to do more artillery shooting speed, but I couldn't care less about artillery shooting speed. Okay, let's path the spiders through all of this stuff. Shouldn't have any more trouble. It's actually still a lot of red spots over here. Longer paths just means they have more time for the shields to recharge. And through here, through here. And we'll reevaluate. Oh, there's more down here. Okay. We'll have them resupply after that. Laptop CPUs aren't known for their speed. Fast RAM is Factorio's bottleneck, really. In that case, I really messed up. And yeah, graphics are really not much of a problem with Factorio. Although, I think you need a stronger graphics card for it than you used to. How far in SE are you in? Just wondering if it would be at least playable on my Beast Machine integrated graphics. Yeah, graphics... Uh, I want to be careful, but in my experience at least, graphics really aren't the problem with Factorio. And I've never gone for a particularly expensive graphics card. Signals are still flat. Oh, I completely forgot about that. Yeah, there's still some purple over here. Am I carrying signals? I definitely am, but I don't have roboports. I forgot about that. Good call, thank you. How far to the left do you want to put the new wall? I think far enough that... Well, we're not going to bump into any resources here, but really I want to use this water. So probably here-ish. This, this is actually really awkward. We could probably use some landfill. So yeah, about here. Take advantage of the water as much as possible. Make the shortest wall that we can. The only issue that I have looking at this is 
the mines are so far away that the length of time a train trip takes is actually something to take into account. But I think we'll be fine as long as we just increase the number of... Um, uh, the max number of trains that can queue up to pick up resources. I was able to run 1k SPM 6060 just for comparison. I know all of this about what affects CPS and what's important, but no idea how it works in reality. Are we talking about 20 UPS or less? 20 is a bit harsh. Um, when it comes to, like, first-person shooters, for example, I'm a little bit of a frame rate snob. I can tolerate this low UPS for a game like Factorio, because it's not like I need... I mean, I would prefer it to be 60, obviously, but it's not like I need to have, you know, really good reaction time or excellent sensors or perfectly consistent input or anything here. Um, but even that said, uh, if this was running at 20, I would be extra sad. It does drop a bit more than usual when we're dealing with the biters, of course. Still some spawners up here. Boop, boop. And boop. And we can maybe reach that one. Sure, we get all the spawners. I think that's a worm. Fantastic. Also, SE is probably quite expensive on the frames with all the other worlds. Yeah, it adds up. Is it just space exploration or also some other mods? Uh, basically, SE plus some quality of life mods. Black Cobra. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Oh, we can definitely hit those as well, please. And... I think it's about time our construction spiders made their move. I do have rockets in them, just in case. So, it should be fine to send them over this way. Actually, how many rockets do you military spiders have left? Oh, Mr. Worm. They've still got tons of rockets. Um, maybe we could just have the milit- uh, the- not military. The construction spiders repair these guys. And they could push this part back as well. Oops. I didn't mean to... Uh, didn't mean to make that. I actually forgot this is still in range of the artillery. So... Let's get to using some more of that. And... Trigger that bite a counterattack that's sure to come. Construction spiders alone can probably deal with any remnants. They don't have shields, but for the most part they don't need them. Don't believe I've targeted these yet. What's this? It's a spawner. 
How rude. How are we going with that rocket? Uh, I think we launched it. Yes. Yes, we did. Fantastic. Okay, let's put our request for uranium fuel cells back again. And bump this back up to... 120... 100... Yeah, 125 is our target. It's going to take quite a while to trigger a rocket launch. Which is the idea. Um, let's see how quickly we can make these space capsules now. Considering that the moment I look at this, it's already going. That's a pretty good sign. Although, we still seem to be bottlenecking on solar panels. I could always just have solar panels delivered here. Or I could also... I think I already ra ratioed this so that it's going to consume all the green circuits. Yeah, 45... Well, that's actually double. The amount of circuits flowing in here. Uh, maybe we should fix that. 45, 15, 15, 15. That's kind of a problem. You know what? Why don't we just... Bring in some solar panels. And we'll change the name of this. So now we've got the rail network uh, mostly supporting production of these space capsules. I really love the view of incoming arty shells. It always reminds me of Supreme Commander slash Total Annihilation. I loved those. Um, as far as I'm aware, I mean, it's probably something's changed by now. But at least for the longest time, there was no other... Okay, they're going to get damaged by worms. I don't particularly want to use the construction spiders for that. However, adding the military spiders we'll, we'll get the military spiders repaired by the construction spiders. And then we'll have the military spiders clear this out. Uh, but yeah, Supreme Commander, Total Annihilation were pretty great, I think. Um, I'd much prefer... Okay, y you can never completely do this because... Managing the economy of games like that takes a lot. And... I got relatively good, or so I was told, at Supreme Commander in a relatively short time, but the amount of time it would have taken me to get better, uh, I just didn't... I didn't want to put that much time in. But, in my experience, maybe it changes when you get to, like, the upper levels, uh, like, rank-wise, but... Instead of it being about strategy, it mostly came down to an arm wrestle of who could churn out more units. But I think having the auto... Like, being able to queue up, build this unit, this unit, this unit, this unit, and this unit, and then repeat forever, as opposed to being forced arbitrarily to click for... or press a hotkey or whatever for every single unit you ever build, 
and having like a limit of, I don't know, seven things that you can queue up in a building and having to pay everything up front, etc, etc. Um, I think that just exacerbates the problem. SC2 was much more friendly? How so? Are we not... Huh? Are we not repairing our friends? You've got bots, you've got roboports. Do my construction spiders really not carry repair packs? They don't. Okay, that is surprising. Um, tell you what. Military spiders go back to the wall just to get repaired. The economy was much easier to handle in my experience. Paying upfront is also a problem. Rather should pay when that unit is the one being built. It optimizes your cash flow and predictions more. Yeah, I mean, to some extent, there's personal preference, obviously. Or to every extent. But I don't particularly like it, it seems terribly uh ironic to me the idea that um a strategy game comes down to how fast you can click you did pay only when building in starcraft yeah there's a different irony it, it's obviously uh, obviously this is not absolute, but, uh, like, high-level play of something like Quake actually becomes a strategy game. Um, map control, etc. becomes extremely important. Or even at, like, middling levels of skill. Starcraft, you pay on you. Yeah. Yeah, so if you want to, like, fire and forget for, a, like, even a minute or five that you want to build a bunch of units, you have to have all of the resources already saved up. I also meant Supreme Commander 2 being much more friendly on the economy. Never really played. Ah, yeah, Supreme Commander was good. Absolutely. Alright, I think we've cleared enough that we can figure out where our first bit of wall is going to go. Uh, I kind of want to get the construction spiders a little bit out of range of it so I can make corrections before they go and cliff explode or something. Did we get these guys repaired already? Not just yet. All right, I'll park you over here. And then... Uh, tier 1 wall for starters. Fill out the rest once that's finished. Wait, is this actually... passable? This part isn't. So I'm thinking we start about here. We'll add some landfill for this part. See how this lines up at the top. Not very well at all. Maybe we could start at the top instead. Let me just place a little bit of wall there so I know where it goes. Actually, I was going to undo all of it. No, let's just do it this way. And then cancel that. Okay. T1 
here, one wall, chickens, about here. And how does this line up? Uh, not that bad, honestly. We can do whatever we like here. So I think that'll be fine. Let's queue up some... I don't think our construction spiders carry any landfill, do they? Or is it one stack? Landfill. They do. One stack each. Okay, that's actually plenty for this. Uh, let's place some landfill. Uh, probably all the way to here. And here. Probably don't need that bit. And let's get them started. We definitely don't need to destroy cliffs uh, for the sake of building walls. don't know why this part didn't get cancelled earlier. I guess I just didn't drag the cursor far enough out. That actually doesn't kill any extra cliffs. Takes advantage of some a little bit. Cool. I don't know if they're carrying enough stuff. Okay, for the most basic version of this wall, they're definitely carrying enough to get this done. Let's get our military spiders to clear out this nest before things get a bit awkward. Figure out where the radars... Oops. Nope, 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 nope. Figure out, figure out where the radars are going to fit down here. This one might end up being a bit awkward. Let's see. Goes there. Then I think our only gap for where the radar would normally go isn't gonna be here. Let's just put it down here. Probably want to stamp down Again, where you place the landfill? Yeah, of course. Um, there's going to be more added here later, but that's fine. I also need to clear out this stuff behind us. Especially the spawners. Let's have a look around for some spawners that we may have missed. Doesn't seem like there are any. Is this in range? Not quite. No, I think we're pretty much good. Okay, and then, and then, and then, military can go a bit more direct here, I should probably also be figuring out where the rail is going to go. 
kind of a lot of uh, worms in the way still. That'll do. Let's babysit our precious little military. Fantastic. Yeah, if you're using rockets, the spiral is really good. Assuming you have a decent amount of shielding. They've also got lasers, but you never see them use them because if a rocket is on track to kill something, uh, nobody's going to waste extra ammo on it. So the lasers are really super duper a last resort, as long as they've got um, 800 rockets each. I guess you could have them use lasers more if you only gave them like 200 rockets each, but then they're going to run out a lot easier. Alright, I guess we can continue building now. It's a little bit of a shame the... well... Yeah, there's more biters up here. Water goes here though. Hmm. Maybe it's not too late to consider moving the wall forward just that little bit more. So we get this crude oil. Now, we've got plenty of crude oil, and I don't want to put crude oil directly into the flame turrets. Uh, light oil is a little bit better for that. Probably a good idea to clear out this base as well. And then back to here. I hope the construction spiders have enough rail to build this on the way back. Um, I could get rid of those extra roundabout pieces. In fact, I should probably make a version of this thing that doesn't include them. Just for this. But the idea is to stamp those down in the appropriate measurements to expand out our rail block. Uh, the grid, that is. Yeah, they really don't have trouble with the biters themselves. Alright, construction spiders, keep going. And that is going to be wall number one. Not exactly complete. But at least strong enough to kill any random expansion groups, perhaps. And now we've got everything in place to get ready to expand it. So I'm going to copy this station first. And that can go about here. We will need to connect the light oil somewhere. I don't think we can get over this, can we? Oh, just barely. Let's do it this way. 
And then... And the ground goes through here. Perfect. Fantastic. Now, there should be an LTN request. Oh, we need to connect power first. Like this. And yeah, there's already an LTN request to get here. Uh, we'll have to catch up with that by getting this rail built as soon as possible. And don't forget some signaling. Uh, I want to figure out where I'm going to put the artillery drop-off station first, though. I think I'll just put these next to each other, and we can have a bit of rail go like this. Which means our signals are going to go over here. Should be enough room for the train. Yes, good. Right, now we just need to get our construction spiders to build all of this. Oh, and we also need to make a hole in the existing wall so that rail can be uh, brought through it. I think they're probably going to run out of rail before they finish building that. Okay. Meanwhile, let's get our military spiders to make sure we've finished cleaning all of this up. basically done here. I'll send them back for repair and resupply after that one. How much rail am I carrying? Only like 300. I think we've got... No, we don't. Let's make our construction spider carry... Not construction spider, our speedy spider. Let's get you to carry... 2,000 rail in the trunk. Once I remember where the rail actually comes from... It's over here where the purple science used to be. There it is. That'll make it a lot easier for the bots to uh, get that rail placed in the spider. And... I could also pick some up. It would automatically go in my trash slots. Oh, I forgot to set these... Logistic filters as well. But yeah, the bots are incredibly powerful at very short distances. Not so much at long distances. Uh, our UPS is crying because once your rail network gets big enough, every time you place down a signal, you're going to get uh, a bit of calculation happening. 
a noticeable bit of calculation happening. Or even when you mark it for deconstruction, apparently. Let's make room for the rail through here. Looks like our spiders might actually have enough rail to get this done in one go. It's getting very close, actually. Meanwhile, we're carrying lots and lots of rail. Let's head over there. Oh, that hurts. Ouch. Oh, Owie. It's still not as bad as it used to be with our old, um... Uh, our old mega base, but I think that... I can't remember if that was on my older computer or not. Alright, once that is connected... Uh, we should, question mark? Have a train on the way. To this stop right here. Are you still saying no path? You are not saying no path. Fantastic. And there's also a train headed up here as well. Actually, I should have remembered this. Um, I don't want the artillery train to come here until this wall is stronger. We're using an artillery train to deliver shells here because it can carry way more than the... Uh, two and a half times as much as the cargo wagons when it comes to artillery shells. But while it's stopped here, even if the inserters are taking all the shells from it, it will actually auto-target spawners, for example. So that would trigger counter-attacks, which our little baby wall would probably not be able to handle yet. But now we have uh, various things that are needed for the wall, being put into small trains, brought by LTM. We're also going to get some light oil delivered here, which is going to go into our flamethrower turrets. And that is a lot of different stuff that this train is carrying. I'm very happy with the system that I finally came up with for um, for loading precise amounts of stuff into these small trains. And what's more is everything that is in the logistic network is made available to them. So we can literally... We can basically request anything at any station with small trains. The big trains are just for high volume stuff. We don't bother with a big train unless we're filling it. Oh, there's one little flaw in this, actually. I could probably stand to improve this next time. Um, but I haven't actually made it so that you don't need to drop at least one logistic bot here in order to get the whole thing seeded. Um, it's not too difficult to set it up so that you can direct insert... Uh, bots from a train into the roboport.
but I just didn't do it yet. It does just take one Logibot to get this whole thing going. Military spiders are still full health. Fantastic. It looks like they don't need to be as careful here as I was making them. I should probably send them over to those spawners first. Yeah, the worms aren't a threat. The spawners actually are. Whoa, how many trains are coming? These could be going to different walls. That one's going back to the depot. That one is going to depot. And that one is bringing the light oil. Fantastic. So few... oh. Oh no, there isn't. There's a lot of worms here. I was gonna say we could probably just have the military spiders charge right in here, but that would probably be bad. We need this worm spit to miss as much as possible. I mean, it's not like any of them would have died, but still. Okay. You're already down to half shielding, really. Dare I trust them to get through that. We're almost there. So we're going to drop a single logistic bot. It should fly off over this way. And once it reaches its destination... I wish you could track units. Oh, it's going to take a... Wait, what? It's a higher priority to put stuff in here. And I don't think there are any logistic requests for construction bots in those green chests. There we go. How many construction bots we got here? Only two. So why... Available construction bots. Set filter blacklist. Construction... Oh, we have built everything so far. Silly me. Time for an upgrade. Tier 2 is the same as Tier 3, except there's no artillery. We don't put the artillery turrets here until we're ready to defend against really scary waves of biters. Now, let's not destroy cliffs for the sake of walls. And... It's kind of hard to see on the map in the dark, but... Oh, there's one. That's basically it. Uh, now that I'm here, let's also build our radars out. You can see a blue square on the mini-map. Oh, I'm not in the spider. 
You can see a blue square on the minimap that shows the immediate radar range. My bots are doing their part as well. So we're just going to place the minimal number of radars here to keep the wall visible all the time. Luckily, there's some very convenient gaps uh, right about here, I think. That'll fit a radar. And one more up here. Can we get it all the way to the top? Yes. Fantastic. How about we put this one... Is that actually a full... There's actually nowhere in this chunk where we can naturally slide the radar in. Alright, fine. Let's just have a slight overlap here. The accumulators look like a 6 and a 9. Do they? Wait, on the map? Or... Oh, they do too. Uh... It wasn't intentional, I promise. It's fine. I would never... Fantastic. So that is our... That is our new north, 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 west wall auto building. And once we've placed all of that, we're going to drop the... I do wish there was a setting you could use to say... Place all of this, but don't remove cliffs. This is the only use case where I would want that, but still. Um, yeah, all that's left now is to make sure this space is cleared and start building a wall. Well, because of the way this part curves, it's a little inconvenient. Maybe we just won't worry about these particular stone mines for now. So we could build a wall somewhere like this. That'll cover all of our iron and coal anyway. That's what's really important. Uh, but yeah, that is just about going to wrap it up for today, I think. I did start late, but we have been going a while. A bit longer than usual, in fact. Let's see who is streaming Factorio for today. Colonel Will. Fiery Toad. Growing the factory, I'm not addicted, honest. None of us are addicted to Factorio. Never have been. Thank you for the follow, Black Cobra. Do you guys think we should stream, uh, we should raid today? There's actually a lot of, wow, this, is this Primetime Factorium? I've never seen so many people streaming Factorio, actually. Well, I guess it is the weekend, and it's like... America time, right? Uh, Tiroir de Peace? Thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Alright, let's, uh... Let's just go for... The Will of Colonels. We'll do a small one next time. Thank you all for watching. Do take care. And I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord or the Blueprints if you're interested. If you have any questions or anything, by all means. And for now. 
Do take care. See you guys. Take care, Kron. Yeah, yeah. That's why I saw the two lights.